Hey y'all, I am going to get this going right quick. I was going to back it off because Kathy is live. So if you're over there watching Kathy, please stay, please enjoy. I have to get this done and over with because I have stuff to do. So normally I would have backed it off because she is live, but I need to get through this today because I have crap to do. So let's get going. Happy Tuesday. Let me go back up here right quick. Hey, Mark. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Hey, Britt, Zoya, JJ, counting by day. I got to text you later. Donna, Jackie, a blank slate, starry night, twinkles. Britt, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Oh, accounting, you're always so busy. Revival. Helen, it's so good to see you and have you back. Sorry, I, it was me. I had some free memberships to finish giving out and I keep forgetting. So I hopped on there right quick and gifted them. I get 10 every month and I had only given five away. So it's just a thank you for being here and welcome to the cabana <laughs> to everybody who got them. Hey, Tracy. Hey, B10. Mortal Cat and Fit and Curvy, Mother of Two Boys. You don't have to sit on your hands over here. In fact, I'm going to kind of start this off and probably offend people. Why do I always say I'm going to offend people? Because we, y'all know as soon as I hit the live button, chances are I'm offending somebody. Like, I, I don't have a way of sugarcoating shit. I've never been good at sugarcoating shit. I've never... Hey, Christina, I love you, miss you. Um, I've just never been good at this. Like, I've never been good at saying things like politically correct to not hurt people's feelings. I say things the way they are and how I see them. And that's just kind of how it goes. So I want to address some things that kind of got confused yesterday. And I got a message. I got an email. This is why I check my emails one time, see one, and then I'm out. Like I'm so behind on them, but it is what it is. Hey, Pecan. Okay. So uh, first of all, if you're coming in to troll me, feel free, pull up a chair, sit on down. Um, just know that from now on, the mods are free to do whatever they want to with you. And that includes dropping your links so everybody can track your troll accounts. So when you change the names, you know, it's exposed. Revival had an awesome plan with that yesterday. And I love that the mods are finding that they can, they don't have to have all the fun themselves. They can drop your links in here and everybody else can check you out too. Anyways, calling me chubby. Let's address some of the things that happened yesterday. <laughs> Revival's amazing. Um, thank you, JJ. I calling me chubby is never going to bother me, first and foremost. Y'all, if you are concerned at 40 some years old about what strangers on the internet think of your looks, we've got made way bigger issues in the world than what some random stranger is gonna say. I, I could care less what they say. I know who I sleep next to. Like none of this stuff even makes sense. It's laughable. And I appreciate you guys laughing about it because it's stupid. Saying I took the Lord's name in vain. Hell yeah, I did. Yep. Absolutely. If that bothers you, this isn't the chat for you. Period. Point blank. End of story. I mean, <laughs> seriously, it's so stupid. Uh, saying I have a potty mouth. Hell yeah, I do. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. End. End. Um, end. And calling me a dumbass. Um. That's all I've been called for two years. And meanwhile, my dumbass is sitting here 
still not lying to people about my identity or that I lost a child like other people that have called me dumbass for two years. Anyways, I mean, I could go on and on forever, but I just figured those were the comments I missed. I didn't even see that stuff happening yesterday. So there was a lot of confusion. I didn't even know that some of the stuff was happening in the chat. I was seeing other things that were popping up because the pages were scrolling like that. So <laughs> it just goes, but I want to bring it back to what I did talk about that's important. Yeah. I mean, I show my FUPA. I, I could care less. Hey, happy life. Cheesy wheezy. Hey, everybody coming in. Exactly, Helen. Like, come on. <laughs> like, people, get a grip. Anyways, those things will just never affect me, like the intent. I would love any of these people to come in here and have a constructive conversation and actually defend their views, but they can't do that. They just got to take low blows because that's the level they're at. There is one thing that I wanted to talk about, though, because in this email that I opened up, they talked about how I brought up white privilege and how out of place that was. Well, excuse me, but um, come again, because if that was a person of another ethnicity out there in those neighborhoods taking pictures and filming people, do I need to fucking explain in 2024 the difference of this? And if you fucking don't understand that we have privilege, we white blonde people do have inherent privilege in some of these aspects. And that's exactly what they're showing. If this was, let's say another YouTuber of a different ethnicity, they would have a different experience. Okay. That's it. That's all. And if you can't rationalize that, uh, Dolly's white, JLR's white, Betty's white. I mean, what the fuck? I, I shouldn't even have to explain this, but this is just that ultimate denial, like that lack of understanding the constant, my rights, my rights, my rights are being violated. I, I've never seen so much thin skinned bullshit on this app ever as I have in the last fucking two, three weeks. Now, another thing I'm going to say that might bother some of you, again, don't really care. If it bothers you, wear the fucking shoe, lace that bitch up and fucking jump on it. If you are calling out these people who are spreading misinformation and continue to do harm to these cases, you are part of the problem if you're using a child's picture as your thumbnail and then talking about the drama. If you are hashtagging his information, there's no need to do that. If you are actually victim focused, there is no need to be putting his face as your thumbnail. Love ya. Have fun at work. Oh, I got, I need to call you too, Christina. Um, Kenzie's been bugging me about questions. Hey, Clemson girl. This whole fucking thing of using victims, you're not, you're not a, how are you any better when you're hashtagging it? I know you're trying to get your stuff seen, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do the same things that they do. That makes you no better than them. This is why I can't understand. Like some of you have never been victim focused and that's okay. That's totally okay. You are just call out channels, but you're never going to be victim focused. And that's what I'm seeing all over the place. People using Sebastian's name, his, the hashtag, all of that stuff. Meanwhile, calling out people like JLR and stuff. I'm sorry, but this is still a 15 year old child with autism. He deserves respect and he deserves to not have his face plastered all over these drama channels. Truth be told that that's it. He is a victim. His family is a victim right now. And that's the way it stands. And there is so many other ways that you can get yourself in the algorithm. In if you're really about the victims, you don't give a fuck about the numbers. You don't give a fuck about the hashtags. You don't give a shit about that stuff if you're truly about the victims, but that's what separates some of us away from the others. And I have been like this from day one. Now, let me take you back a, a quick second before I go any further, because I think there's some confusion. And somehow I got lumped into this group out here on YouTube. So I have never been a part of the cliques, never will be. I keep a very small circle. I love the Islanders. We kind of created our own thing, everything. Yeah. Cheesy, I appreciate that too. I, I don't either. And I understand why some of them do, but I also think that it's very underhanded. I also find it very disgusting that people... <sighs> Hold. I'll be careful what I say there. Um, Hey, Amberly. 
it is something to me that really is bothersome when you see that these people have done the same shit over and over and over again. And I am not trying to toot my own horn, pat myself on the back or anything. I came in here onto YouTube because somebody was being exploited, continued to be exploited. There was no dignity shown for him whatsoever. It taught me a lot, but I never changed that up. I've never, I pop into some channels here and there, even less more these days. I have really always, the victims to me are what are always forgotten in situations like this. This is so harmful for so many others around. It is constantly harming victims, their families, the justice for these families. Like this is so chaotic. This is a serious issue. So for me, when I look at other channels that are calling this stuff out and they're tiptoeing around the facts, they're tiptoeing around it because a lot of these people share subs with some of these bad actors and they don't want to fully commit to saying this is vile, this is disgusting, and this is dangerous for victims, period. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to lose the subs that they share with these other people because they fence road for so long. So that's why I don't fence ride. That's why I don't go into these chats. That's why I don't engage with a lot of these people. I, I keep myself very isolated for the reason of it is so easy, as we've seen, for people to get caught up on the numbers and the views and things of that nature. And then they won't be honest or their integrity won't show because they're more concerned about losing viewers and subs and offending people by not speaking. Like they won't actually fully say it. Like they kiki and ha ha about shit. That's really serious. I, I don't know, but I've always stood here. I've always been victim centered. Somebody said, how can you talk about victims and their stories and then hop into this? Well, um, my channel has always been about highlighting victims, their tragedies, and the people who exploit them for monetary gain, whether that be wealthy, the government, it, it's all encapsulating. So why wouldn't I talk about this? Why wouldn't I? So let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about what we're going to talk about, because I've got some major issues. And my, I wanted to have my door open, but my washing machine is being loud. So let me, let me shut the door. And I'm not trying to be rude or mean or disrespectful, but with all due respect, some of you don't deserve respect, period, because you just hop on. You don't really stand for shit. And that's just the truth of it. I hate to say that, but it's very apparent these days that so many people don't stand for shit. All right. Absolutely a blank slate. Absolutely. I just find it so weird when I get asked about these questions. I'm like, I do I really have to explain this to people? Like the comment yesterday, I think that really bothered some people was somebody saying that I exploit these victims and their families and their tragedies. <clears throat> somebody needs to catch a clue. Catch a clue. All right. So we're going to hop into this. We are going to talk about JLR to start with. By the way, if you are not familiar with who JLR is, I encourage you to do your research. In fact, we could actually, I don't like Wikipedia. It's not very, um, it's not very truthful a lot of times because people can edit it themselves and all of that stuff. But Jonathan over here has a Wikipedia account and there's a lot more on him than this, but let's, let's do this first. Let's go here first. Let's turn it to this one. Okay, I just want to remind people of who this is that we've been talking about. Jonathan Lee Riches is a convicted fraudster known for the many lawsuits he has filed in various United States districts. Riches was incarcerated at Federal Medical Center, Lexington, Kentucky, for wire fraud under the terms of a plea bargain. His release date was April 30th, 2012. He was arrested for violating his federal probation in December of 2012 when he left the Eastern District, District of the state of Pennsylvania without permission. He allegedly drove to Connecticut and impersonated the uncle of Adam Lanza, the school shooter in the Sandy Hook Elementary School incident. 
Since January 8th, 2006, he has filed over 2,600 lawsuits in federal district courts across the country, some of which have received considerable press attention. I think he's up way over that now. I think this is old information. Just to keep in mind, I'm pretty sure he's way up there. Among our the more famous defendants of his lawsuits are the New England Patriots, Coach Bill Belichick, former President of the United States, George W. Bush. Have you sued Trump yet? I'm just curious. I'm surprised he hasn't attempted to sue Biden, actually. Former Attorney General of the United States, Janet Reno, Martha Stewart, NASCAR driver, Jeff Gordon, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback, Michael Vick, entrepreneur, Steve Jobs, celebrity blogger, Perez Hilton, Somali Pirates, and pop star, Britney Spears. He also sued the late Benazar Buhata. I don't know, the Immigration and Nationalization Service on November 7th, 2007 to prevent him from being deported to Pakistan and tortured upon his release from prison in 2012. There is no known evidence of any attempt to deport Riches. On April, April 9th, 2008, Riches filed a request for a temporary restraining order in a U.S. district court against Grand Theft Auto publisher Take-Two, developer of Rockstar Games. FCI, Williamsburg, and Grand Theft Auto itself, claiming that the defendants put me in prison. The inmate stated defendants contributed to the plaintiff committing identity theft. Defendants' games show sex, drugs, and violence, which offends him, Riches continued. Defendants put me in prison. I face imminent danger from the violent inmates who played Grand Theft Auto and will knock me out and take my gold Jesus cross. Hell, Maybe I should have asked you guys to put your tinfoil hats on. Hey, Chico. I have heard so many people recently claim JLR's changed. He's honest. I've heard people say that Betty has changed, that she's done so good recently not exploiting victims. Please tell me where the fuck this is happening. Please, please enlighten me. Because all you see is JLR exploiting a humanitarian crisis by being at the border. I don't give a shit what your political views are. If there's no invasion, that's here nor there. Your own group has said that. Your MAGA idiots have said there is no invasion. There is nothing for an invasion. Um, in fact, the border bill that was tried to be passed was specifically stopped because of Trump, who he praises, JLR praises. Um, so he's been pushing nonsensical propaganda out here for a long fucking time. And I hear people say, well, there's no victims in that. These people are seeking asylum because they are being tortured in their own countries. They can't feed their kids. They're not victims. And a lot of them, unfortunately, are victims of what the United States has done to their countries, too. You can't you can't stop eliminate like you can't pick and choose like, oh, this and this and this. Yes, there's some horrible people coming in. Absolutely. But the reality is he's still exploiting tragedies. It's a humanitarian crisis. No different. Sorry. And he's out there following documented farm workers around saying that they're illegals. He's a fucking dipshit. He always has been, in my opinion. He always will be. He's nothing but a fraudster, according to Wikipedia. And again, that's not even all of it. He is, hey, Vic. Hey, Pika. Hey, y'all. Hey, Nisi. Um, he is what he is. Plus, the guy can't How long can I sit like this and not move my eyeballs? It really actually starts to sing after a while. Can you imagine walking around like this all the time? To I'm still too expressive. I need to stop that. How long can I go without blinking? It burns. It burns. Anyways, the dude is a fucking trip and he is nothing but a con artist. He is a professional con artist, in my opinion. That's all he is. And that's all he'll ever be. He's the ex-boyfriend, best friend, friends with benefits, whatever, of blow home dipshit herself. Like, that's their own statements. She's put it in court records. She's put it in police reports. That's not hearsay. That is her own words and police complaints that she's filed against him. We're going to get into her in a minute. But JLR, JLR, first of all, you need to blink because that hurts me trying to even imitate you. You are nothing but a fucking clown and an embarrassment to the United States and every other worldly 
You would be an embarrassment to the fucking aliens. Let's be honest. You, you are such a travesty. It's for anybody to even remotely try to give this guy any credence makes me understand where the world is. But let's get into why I'm saying all this. Let, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to go over here to his page again. This is all under fair use. This is called for educational and entertainment purposes only. And this is based on my opinion of the facts of what's put out here about this dipshit and what he comes out of his own mouth. Don't blame me, blame him. If you're offended by this, fuck away from the buckle up. All right. Should we count and see how many blinks he has in this one? That might be the most entertainment we have out of this. I don't have a hat that's crooked either. JLR investigates. Come on in, everyone. JLR investigates the search for... JLR investigates. JLR investigates. What do you investigate? What exactly do you investigate? 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers continues. Good morning, God damn, everyone. He's blinking a lot already. Come on in. We have to talk. We have to. to use a platform to bring public awareness to a situation, folks. That's all we're doing is bringing public awareness to a situation, folks. That's all we are doing. In his own words, we are bringing an awareness to a public situation on a public platform of his own statements. Touche. I urge every single person out there that has been following JLR Investigates to stay away from the United Cajun Navy. They are a complete scam. And I don't come on very often ever talking about drama. But oh boy, oh boy, we have uncovered a lot about this so-called search group. No, he saves that all for Twitter. If you want to see him doing drama and following people around, putting their information all over, that's, that's done on Twitter. And if you think for one second he is not behind some of this, just go look up his smut magazines that he writes under all of this false fabricated information. He's got a whole website that he puts out tabloid type articles on. Remember back in the days of when Marvon passed away and all the articles were coming out? JLR. That is in Hendersonville, Tennessee right now, hijacking everything. And creating a lot of problems, folks. Come on in. Come on in. Yes. Stay away from the United Cajun Navy. They are a scam. They're scam. They're scam. They're. And where, where's the proof, JLR? Where's the proof, JLR? Did your mama tell you to say this? Faking. They're lying to the public about their searches. I have receipts, folks. I have receipts. Oh. And I'm a little bit ticked off because a lot of you guys know that I've been putting in all my heart and passion on our end, right? His heart, his black little shriveled up heart, his black little shriveled up heart. Absolutely. 400%. Thank you. Happy life. Okay. Are you ready? This is going to get. This is going to even get better and better because he's just quite the entertainment. Magnolia has been assisting me. Other people around me have been doing great, phenomenal work. Phenomenal. The United Cajun Navy had the police called on me yesterday. No, he was? Up at the at their so-called search meeting site. Was... B. Tim, are you still in here? How many blinks did you get? I did, I missed everything this morning. I popped into Kathy's before I popped on, but I missed most of everything this morning. But that's hysterical because this guy is such a clown. I need to know, B. Tim, if you how many blinks you got to. He's just minding my business in my car. Mm -hmm. And this guy who identifies himself as Skip Butler runs up on my car and tells me I have to me leave immediately or he's calling the police. And I said, what do you mean I got to leave immediately? I'm not doing anything wrong. What's going on? This guy right here. Beware of this guy because he's using multiple names, folks. He told So here he is giving public awareness, right? So should we go pull up all of, I mean, we could. We could do the same thing to bring awareness to what you're doing and what a fraud and a con you are, in my opinion. I mean, proven by your past history, proven by the Internet. I mean, it is what it is. But he's going to sit here and attempt to dock somebody because he didn't get his way. And this is his baby fit throwing, I guess. Omi Skip Butler. 
United Cajun Navy when they were down there in Nashville. He's calling himself Skip Parker. Who is this guy? He does not want to be filmed. He's the one that is running. He's the man, the United Cajun Navy, their, their, their founder, I guess. Their, so we did some research, folks. You want to know who does their research? Let's wait. There's multiple branches of the Cajun Navy, right? But the United Cajun Navy is an offshoot of original Cajun Navy. And those other Cajun Navies do not like United Cajun Navy at all. They do not. They say they they manipulate things. They lie. They, 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 they're they in it for the money. Sounds like the perfect group for heels on the fucking ground to meet up with. Sounds like the perfect merger. You're calling them frauds, which from my understanding, there's a couple offshoot groups, depending on who you're actually talking about, who knows, because you just throw shit out here. But I think that would be the perfect merger. Get the band back together and add some additional members. Why the fuck not? You guys could call it the con man tour. Hell, sounds like a great idea. They're in it for themselves. Well, this guy up here approaches me and he says he's going to, I got to get out of here. He's going to call the cops. I actually left, but I called him a scam artist to his face. Why'd you leave? If you're not afraid and you weren't doing anything wrong, why were? Why would you leave? And he called the cops. I left, and then I had an interaction with Hendersonville police. Professional, totally cool. They were cool. Totally cool. You see, he did nothing wrong, whatever like that. Shook all their hands. They actually watched the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine this right now? What he's saying? They actually watch the channel. They're such big fans. Oh my God. JLR, you're starting to sound like Betty all of a sudden right here. They do not. They don't watch your shit. They've probably been tracking you guys with all the bullshit you're doing. That's it. They don't watch you. They're not fans of yours. Now, some people in the chat are saying another live streamer has had the same situation. Dolly. Where they did, he's talking about Dolly, but JLR is like the attention seeking type, so he can't. The same thing, these people are evil, folks. The founder, Todd uh, Terrell, it's Christopher, his name is Christopher Todd Terrell. He has numerous cases of outstanding child support from Louisiana. And hold, hold on here, wait a second, wait, pause. What does it say on here? Um, how many lawsuits? A number of Rich's lawsuits have been dismissed as being frivolous, malicious, or for failure to state a claim upon which relief could be granted. In July of 2018, Rich's was indicted by a federal grand jury in Arizona. He is charged with making false statements and other frauds after an attempt to file a lawsuit against Gabby Giffords while posing as Jared Lee Loughner. A collection of Rich's lawsuits was published on April Fool's Day, 2016. In November of 2018, Rich's self-published Nothing is Written in Stone, a Jonathan Lee Rich's companion, which contains a section a selection of his lawsuits as an, well as an autobiography. Um, so a fraud calling out a fraud? And why are we talking about child support when he's out here searching for a child? Anybody make sense of this? A anybody? Because this is the most laughable shit ever. This guy can't even fucking pass a background check. And the irony of this whole situation is look on the case logs in Baton Rouge. The guy owes buku amounts of child support and they're out here using a child, oh. using a child, folks, and pretending they're having searches. The irony of all of this. Their vice president went on Nancy Grace yesterday and had the audacity to say that spot. Remember that spot where that dog hit at Rockland Creek or Rockland Recreation Center? Remember that dog spot? Their vice president had the audacity and went on to Nancy Grace and say that it was a, ho a dead homeless man there. It ended up being a dead homeless. There was no dead homeless man there. Authorities didn't find a body there. It's a complete lie. This guy rolls up. This guy rolls up to a bowling alley. The frauds calling out the frauds, supposedly. 
and tells everyone they got to sign in and check in and make sure you donate, 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 donate. Now, I just want to stress. It kind of sounds like the rest of you idiots. Folks, I'm a little bit ticked off because they're pulling off a scam and I actually reported them oh. to the local authority. These are gypsies. These are opportunities. These are the type of people. He just called them gypsies. No, the fuck he did not. <laughs> oh my God. Cool. I'm going to tell you who these people are. Oh, tell us, JLR. You are so... He's even got some color in his cheeks. He's really flustered. And you could do your own research in Google because the United Cated Cajun Navy is involved with scandals, folks. There's articles out there. They're so is JLR. No way. I can't even make my fingers do that. So is JLR. Is this like the duck sign? What is he? What is he trying to do here? I can't. I can't make my finger. I, I don't know what he's so tempting to do, but so is JLR, folks. So is JLR. He's involved in a lot of salacious shit. So-called leader has been involved with racks of restraining orders and legal problems because other organizations say they skip out on paying money, they solicit funds, they pocket it for themselves, they don't use it for what they're using it for. Look it up. Has he spent time at behind a federal bars multiple times? Has he tried to involve himself in a school shooting by trying to say that you are the school shooter's uncle? Any of that ring a bell? I mean, that's all stuff JLR does. Look it up. Do not associate with these people whatsoever. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. Now, I had a long conversation with Seth Rogers last night. I think originally he might be from Pennsylvania. I don't know if he was is from Pennsylvania, but he's got ties to Pennsylvania and Florida, and that's public information. That's why I don't mind saying it. And he says it himself. I 100% support that man, support the inner circle of him. They are great people. They are passionate. They are trying to find it. And they're actually- Y'all, there is a lot of drama surrounding the United Cajun Navy, and Navy, the real Cajun Navy. There is so much to like differentiate between all of that. That's not my point here. It's just ironic that this fucking fool is calling anybody a fraud or a scammer considering his detailed court proven federal lawsuits. Like- the audacity that he has in this is fucking epic. See, yeah, they want help and I get it. But I told him my feelings. I told them and they understand. And I don't want to make this about me. This is supposed to be about Sebastian. These people are not working with law enforcement. There was no matter of fact, my my honest take, now that I'm looking at it into a, a another person, I think their dogs just False hit. I don't think their dogs found anything. But Olivia broke that news. Olivia broke that dogs were hitting all over the place. Didn't she say six dogs hit? And isn't that your girl that you work hand in hand with? Isn't she under you? I know there's like this umbrella of fucking heels not behind their heads. Hooves, hooves dragging on the ground. Whatever you want to call them. The clowns of the fucking clowns. The clowns of the circus that couldn't even get picked up by the circus whatever you choose to call them. But it's like JLR, then he's got Molly and BHB. Off of them comes Olivia, Spanky. Shit, there's been a few more. Dolly's in there too. JLR can't, well, it goes jail. Oh, that gives me bad pictures in my head because JLR and Betty have had relations. Supposedly Dolly and Betty have had, ew, ew. We're going to put those in. Anyways, you get the whole deal. Like, they're the band. The band has to get back together. But JLR is like the drummer. And then they, they actually sit in the cut and make all the volunteers go. And they, they have this organized thing. And then they start distributing all over their platforms. United Cage and Navy is here to help. Whatever. You know, they're actually kind of taking credit online of filing, uh, uh, finding Riley. They Why didn't they have such a problem when AWP was doing similar shit like this? They didn't find Riley. They didn't find Riley. You know who found Riley? It wasn't them. So this guy here, and I mean, why does it matter who found Riley as long as he was found? Ate a clip because there's two. Listen to this. This is wild. I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna show you something here. 
I called him out right to his face when he came. Listen, why don't you want to be live? Why don't they want to be live streamed? Why don't they want to be recorded doing their organization? You know why? Because they're not regulated to do this. They're not the professionals to do this, folks. And they're just a ragtag group that came from another state that comes up in here. Wait a second. A ragtag group coming from another state. You live in Florida. You're about as ragtag as they come. You're worthless. You're not a professional. You can't even pass a background check. You're a proven con and fraud artist. Sounds again like you're talking about yourself. Loosely organized with a with a representative of them and then solicit money and donations from people. Kind of like what you've been doing over this fake border invasion that you've been trying to push to everybody. You know, the day you were out there following the train like it was some big deal because they were taking equipment on a train and your dumb ass is like, oh, look like something's coming. And then try to go out there and say, we're searching. They said they're claiming they're doing searches today, but everyone has to meet at the bowling alley where the, the bowling alley where Sebastian and his mom went. They're meeting at a bowling alley. My thing is, what are you going to do at a bowling alley? You gonna walk? You were there too. You were at the bowling alley yesterday. Walk down the streets of Henderson searching. No, they're going to do that because they want cameras on them. Media to say, Cajun Navy's out here. Cajun Navy. Boom. they now synonymous with the Sebastian Rogers search. As if they're doing something. They're not doing nothing. I've been here. I've been here boots on the ground. They are pushing the live streamers away. They don't want you to live stream. It's Man, he is really amped up over this. Prohibited. They called the po They literally called the police on me. Wham. And I've done nothing wrong. And I, I wasn't in no trouble or nothing. Please, they laughed at it. This is frivolous. Show that. I'm sure you were recording, so show the, the police laughing about it all. Frivolous. He, frivolous. But look at this guy. Hold on. So I'm just mining in my car, and I see this guy roll up on me. I'm like, all right, there's trouble. So I am just start recording. This is private property. I need to leave, buddy. Whenever I just mobilize, everything gets set up. This is private property. Where are you? My name is Skip Butler. Skip, I'm Dale Butler Investigates. How are you? Are okay. telling me to get off this property? I'm not property? doing any interviews. I'm asking you to leave this private property, please. This in, you know. Sounds like he was pretty respectful. I'm asking you to leave this private property, please. The Cajun Navy Nation, we are here. At that was a jump edit in that. The Shelby Park boat launch in Nashville. And we have our uh, volunteer from South Carolina who just turned around and looked this way. His name's Skip Parker. and it's Now, if you heard that... He tells me, Skip Butler, United Cajun Navy, saying in their own video themselves that he's Skip Parker. Oh, my God. No. Could somebody have gotten the name wrong? Kind of like Dolly calling him Sebastian Roberts instead of Rogers yesterday? No. Somebody couldn't have fucked up the name. Could they have JLR? I mean, everybody's not as perfect as you guys, right? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Like, literally, who is this guy? Now, look, I'm going to play the actual full clip. Leave, buddy. Whatever Yo, Sergeant Little Dick, find your way to the exit because nobody's got time for you or any of your little scumbag friends like JLR. Nobody cares. See your way out. You're a fucking idiot and a clown. Take your fucking idiocracy and have a the day you fucking deserve everything gets set up this is private property where are you my name is skip butler skip i'm yeah. jlr investigate how are you you're okay. telling me to get off this I'm property not doing interviews. i'm asking you to leave this private property please this is private property i'm asking you to leave is it your property i'm asking you to leave this is private property. no i'm not call Thank the police know. call the police why don't you get off the property why don't you get off the property? How are you going to tell another citizen to get off a property? Shame. Instantly defensive. How are you going to tell another citizen to get off private property? Just like he did. He said, please leave. Just like he fucking did. Sounds like you got your panties in a twist. We shouldn't probably speak about the panties, though. Should we, JLR? Why are you scamming people? Why are you scamming people? Why are you scamming people? Why is he scamming people? Who is that guy? I encourage everyone to stay away from the Oh, mobs, it's fucking terrible. Yep.
absolutely Quentin Simon level, if not worse. Them and report them on who they are. They are not doing any searches. They put out these Facebook posts trying to draw people in. It's one of those things like they it's they 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 put these posts and then they say, Oh yeah, we're gonna do searches. They haven't done no searches, folks. They matter of fact, matter of fact, they put on for days that they were gonna go to Rockland. Rockland Recreation Center. Guess what? I called Rockland Rec Recreation Center yesterday and asked them about any searches on that property. They didn't know what I was talking about. They didn't know what I was talking about. I called the management on their phone. If you go to Rockland Recreation Center and look on the look on the sign on the outside, there's a phone number there. You can call management. They wow, he is really angry that their gig is being seen publicly. That a 501c3 does not, a nonprofit doesn't want to have nothing to do with these people. He is really angry. Do nothing about dogs, nothing about searches on their property. But they, on their own site, was poking out, oh, we have to navigate through federal lands. You need to come through us. We need to do this properly and professionally. They're not working with law enforcement. Law enforcement is not interested in Rockland Recreation Center. They're not interested. You have no idea what law enforcement is interested in and not. But they've already determined that the parents are guilty. If you didn't see that yesterday, this, these fools were out here just saying all sorts of shit about the family. But look at this guy. This is the vice president who went on Nancy Grace yesterday. You know the Nancy Grace. And we got to listen to the Proudfoots. Listen to this. Now, to Brian Trasher, VP of Cajun Navy, let's clear it up. Isn't it true this is on federal property that had been closed off? It was a hurricane site earlier. Tornado. It was also, yes, Tornado. thank you. And it was also near railroad tracks, and some homeless people had been living there, and apparently one of them had died, and we believe that is what the dogs were hitting. Kevin Mills, first and foremost. I could give two shits less about his issues with the United Cajun Navy. He is a fucking waste of space, a liar, a fraud, a con man, and a menace to society. And those are all my opinions based on his verifiable background, history, and his own statements. This clown can't even pass a fucking background check, can't even get SAR trained because of his record and what he has done to so many cases. So while you might think he's speaking the truth about the United Cajun Navy, you're missing the point that he is so upset because he is getting called out by people that he's claiming are one step above him in his words. Now, I don't know nothing, don't care about the United Cajun Navy. That's not here nor there. He has proven himself an exploiter of tragedies over and over and over again. That's why we're here. Getting on. Is that correct? Yeah, all of the above is correct. And we did not uh, gain access to the property. It had already been open when we got there. I'm not sure how uh, entry was gained, but but yeah, all everything above it that you said was correct. It's not correct. They didn't find a homeless body on there. That that dog didn't hit a homeless body. The coroner or didn't no police never came there to retrieve no body. No one reported that. There's no evidence of that. There's nothing. We were out there. They didn't find anything at that site. He lied. And so did Olivia then. The vice president of Cajun Navy lied to Nancy Grace to her face. It find a homeless person there at all. It find a homeless person there. Who is this guy? So he identifies as himself as Skip Butler, he tells me. And there's some articles out there with the right. He just came out of nowhere because if you Google him with connected with Cajun Navy, he only pops up suddenly from here, Nashville on Riley, right? He only pops up on not. Dude, these people are gypsies, and I'm saying it, and they can come at me for defamation, whatever. We're taking the truth. We'll go discovery. So he's saying that they're gypsies, and that that's what, why is he so big mad? Man, he's mad. JLR, this is the most ever I've ever seen him like amped up. Normally, he's fucking like that's all. There's 
illegals coming across the border. That's normally what he does. No blinking and just does this weird pointing fucking thing with his hand all the time. This is the most excited I've ever seen him. I got the receipt. I got the receipt. But what's even crazy is this guy, this guy, Todd Terrell, Todd Terrell, who's down in Louisiana is putting out as if, oh, they're the Cajun Navy's here in full force. No, they're not. They sent this guy up named Skip Butler. He might even be Skip Parker because the Cajun Navy identified him in another clip as Skip Parker. So who is he from South Carolina with an airboat? Oh, just kind of like, are you Jonathan Lee Riches or are you Adam Lanz's uncle? Wait, you've given the incorrect names how many times? On purpose though, right? Haven't you been in prison for identity theft? Isn't that something that you've done too? I guess you would probably know a con man, right? Because you're kind of a skilled one yourself, allegedly, according to all the information on your documents everywhere publicly available. So, I mean, you tell me. What the hell are you gonna do in an airboat here? So he goes in the back of a bowling alley and, and parks his vehicle with a big giant airboat as if they're about to do some sort of water searches and stuff like, no, they're not. It, it couldn't be the fact that they're coming back from the Cumberland River. They, it couldn't be the fact that he had a boat attached to his vehicle because they were coming back from searching for Riley. That couldn't be the case. That, that definitely could not be the case. And if they do anything, it's all for show. So I know some people might say, oh, yeah, they are out there, whatever. It's all for show. You know what? They put a post last night. I'm going to show you this. This is ridiculous, too. God, he's amped. This is crazy. They put a post last night where they talked to Burton Skaggs. Or uh, Burton Skaggs, one of a, a local reporter. I like his stuff. I like his stuff. And he tweeted out. He said, I've been in contact with the United Cajun Navy. Now, stressing point, we're talking about United Cajun Navy. There's multiple Cajun Navies. There's actually some good Cajun Navies out there. Cajun Navy 216, they called out the United, United Cajun Navy. But he said, I've been in contact with the United C C Cajun Navy. They will be updating after searches are complete as to, a not, as to not attract crowds, which might overstimulate their canines. That's crazy, folks. So basically what they're saying is, they're going to have secret searches, but they don't want anyone to know their searches because they don't want to disrupt their canines. And then afterward, they'll tell you about the searches. I think JLR needs some like Xanax today. This is, whoa, JLR, you got that heart rate up. My God, this guy got under your skin. This is the most excited I've ever seen this move. Oh, we searched here. We searched here, but we can't tell you where the searches are. You can't live stream the searches. These are all on federal land all over the place, right? I wish the fucking feds would step in and slap these fucking clowns with impeding an investigation. I hope someday soon we watch these guys get charged because they're interfering. If you're missing the point of this, yeah, we can laugh at the clown he is because that's all he is. He is a misinformation crony. He is a propagating pushing machine. He is an absolute travesty to anything around missing children. Thank God he... I won't go any further than that. But he is absolutely a clown. And the seriousness of what JLR and his cronies like BHB, Dolly, Molly, Spanky over there, Justin for no one, Justice for no one, um, those people profit heavily off of children and the missing cases and the tragedies nonstop. What they actually do to justice in these cases and to the active searches is disgusting. They are harming so many cases and it will have a long-term impact. Well, yeah, Rockland Recreation Center is federal land. It is federal land. But guess what? There's not much land and there's nothing there. Authorities don't want anything there. So where else are you going to search? Where else? Let's be honest here, you guys in the chat. I, I just saw your comment. Happy Easter, everyone. I love that one, by the way. But um, it's never been about the missing. That has never been the case with these. This is never, and it will never be. Happy life, thanks for the gifted membership. It will never be about the victims. This is never victim-centered. And that's what I'm saying. If you put 
these people all up. None of them give a fuck about the victims. None of them advocate for the victims. And I can't say it's just them either. It's really becoming a big thing. They don't advocate for the victims. There's no advocacy for the victims, their family, privacy, dignity. We don't know what law enforcement is going to find. We have no idea. But that's never been their focus from get. Never once. They are not victim focused. Absolutely difficult. Uh, he thinks Ballard is a hero. If that gives you any clue, he actually promoted the sound of fraud. Is the Cajun Navy really going to search? I know we're going to. Where are they going to search? Runs with we're going to watch that. But anyway, this Todd Terrell guy, Christopher Todd Terrell, his real name. The dude has warrants out for him for child ch delinquent on child support. And again, why does it matter if a man has delinquent child support? Here's my thing with this. And I, I'm going to go on a tirade for a second because. Who gives a fuck if this guy has past due child support? Yeah, that's between him and his baby's mama and his kid. He needs to pay his child support. Okay, here and over there. That's that's none of our business. Why does that hinder him being able to search for a missing child? Anybody? If JLR, who's been in federal prison for fucking fraud, identity theft, all these other things has the right to be out there searching. It's his constitutional right. Then why wouldn't this guy who's just got some child support stuff? Make it make sense, people. Come on. $12,423.80 delinquent in Baton Rouge, a parish. I'm going to get this guy's mug shot. Cajun Navy, two six. I would love for that guy to pull up right next to him. I guarantee he would be saying a different tune because this guy is a scared chicken shit. Anytime JLR is approached by anybody or confronted by anybody, he ducks his tail and runs. He is such a crybaby bitch. He should actually spend some time in county versus fed because in fed, they get pretty cush. Steve, hard to see with the glare. Here, hold on. Let me show you. They pretty much said... This is Cajun Navy 216. Absolutely, August. You always have got the ones that are out in it for the right reasons. And then unfortunately, you have the other ones. The ones that are out for the right reasons. Exactly how are you fucking helping Sebastian's case? How are any of you helping Sebastian? The only thing we're seeing is drama. Drama, drama, drama. The only thing you've done out there is film the searchers. You weren't searching. You were filming the people who were searching and tramping all over grounds. No care in the world. All you were doing was concerned about filming and the clicks and the views. We will never unite with wolves impersonating as sheep. Good will always prevail. And someone respond, are you referring to the United Cajun Navy Army? Are they not legit? It was great they found that missing boy in Nashville, right? They laughed. Ha ha. They didn't find him. Workers moved barges out of dock did. Watch the police press conference is posted on the page. They're, they're calling out the United Cajun Navy, folks. They're calling out the United Cajun Navy. Do not assist them. I'm, I'm telling my platforms, you are being scammed. If you go out there with them, you're being bamboozled. You're being used for their own donations. Okay, well, I can do that the same thing that JLR just did because JLR did it. So it's obviously okay, right? It's within legal rights to provide awareness to your community about these people who are conning you and are complete fraudsters. Well, JLR, sorry to say, but once again, let's just go over here and look at this. JLR is a proven con man and a proven fraud and a proven bad actor, and a proven liar. I mean, it's Wikipedia, so you can take what you want, but you can research his cases actually through the court system and find out how many times he's been arrested for identity theft, fraud, all the other things. So while JLR is bringing awareness to who he is claiming are frauds and all these things, we'll continue to bring awareness to him. We'll go back over here though and show you some more of the nonsense he's about to spread, so. They are using Seth Rogers. And then there's conflicting things now 
according to Nancy Grace, who are they there for? Are they there for really the Proudfoots? Because of the way I heard it on Nancy Grace yesterday is as if the Proudfoots contacted. Exactly. Please tell me, language, of course, that's how JLR has changed. He's been pushing off misinformation, propaganda pushing information about the border, which he is calling it an invasion, which it's not. It's been a humanitarian crisis for years. So exactly how has he changed? He is profiting off of victims and their tragedies nonstop. Please enlighten me how he's changed. And I, I'm being respectful. I, I would love for somebody to actually tell me what you're seeing change in him because they're what? What has he changed? He's pushing off so much misinformation. I, I don't give a shit. I would love to know where this is coming from that he has changed because nobody has been able to show me one fucking thing about his changed behavior. Is this all a distraction with them? Is it? It's it's shameful. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm seeing a scan before my eyes. I'm trying to raise the you know, the red flags. If you're there, pull out your camera and ask them. The irony of him raising red flags on anybody when you are a fucking walking red flag. A walking red flag. That's all this fucking dude is. He's a clown and a walking red flag. For their credentials. Ask them who they are. Ask them. To Speaking of credentials, JLR, where are yours? Pull out your fingerprint clearance card. Pull out your credentials. Pull out your SAR search and rescue information. Pull out all of the continuing education classes that you've done. Pull out your victim advocacy classes. I would love to see it. Let's see it. You want to talk about credentials? Pull them out. Pull them out. Can you even get a standard fingerprint clearance card? I, I don't think you probably could. Can you pass a FBI background check? Nope, you sure can't. So while you're out here calling out other people and saying all this shit, where's yours? Ask the organizer. If you decide to go and you want to go and you want to make a difference on finding Sebastian, go up to whoever's running this operation with your- Should I pour assault on the wound even more? Hold on. Hold on a minute. Since y'all don't, some of you, some of you don't even understand what that is. Yeah, this might be a little braggadocious, but I don't give a fuck because it's easy and simple to do if you're actually not a fraud. Oh, wait, level one fingerprint clearance card. Oh, shit. No way. JLR's, where's yours? Since you want to call people out for being a fraud, where's yours? Where is it? I'll wait. In the words of Laura, I'll wait your camera and ask them who they are. Ask them to provide you identification. Ask them to provide you credentials on who they are. They remind me of those people when hurricanes hit and disasters hit and they come in there and they try to say, donate money up front and we'll fix your roof. And we'll Fit and curvy. You know, I love to do that though, because this is shit that they can't do. They can't, they will never be able to. And it really pisses me off when they're talking about working with a case with a kid with special needs to begin with. These people are nothing but fucking clowns. They have not a clue. And thank God none of them have the credentials or work with children. Let me say that very clearly because all of them are disgusting pieces of shit. We'll do this. That, that's who they remind me of. These gypsies that, you know, fake the work. It's a fake. It's a facade, folks. And it's my duty to tell you people this. Now, you can believe me. You could choose to believe me. You could choose not to. You could say, oh, I'm just butthurt or whatever because I, I can't live shoot. No, I'm out here trying to find a kid. I'm out here trying to make a difference. I'm out here using my platform to bring awareness to this, this kid that's out there missing. And trust me, we don't need to live stream. That's not it. We were just doing that to bring awareness. But and if you don't need to live stream, then why do you have to constantly live stream? And when you've been asked to stop recording, why is it such a problem? Why are you throwing such a fit? Because you were asked to not live stream. That's pretty simple in reality. It's really fucking simple. If you're asked not to live stream, don't live stream. Okay. You say you don't need to. You can still bring awareness without live streaming. Then do it. Show us. Show us how good you are at a JLR. Come on. Maybe you should have stuck to the fucking crazy orange Jesus and the MAGA bullshit because you suck at this. But KG Navy doesn't want it. Nancy Grace actually told, told them on their podcast today, the live streaming's great. So they were kind of backpedaling a little bit. They were kind of like, oh, yeah. And by the way, let me just say this. I don't give a fuck about anybody's backgrounds. I don't care about your past. There are some real good people who do amazing things who have spent time in prison. 
That is not here nor there. JLR is a piece of shit. He's an epic piece of fucking shit and a failure and an embarrassment to society. That's it. That's all. And that's proven based on his fucking own words, what he brags about doing, all of his bullshit. That's him. He made the bed that he lies in. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe just make videos and, and edit them. You know, we just don't want. No. And Nancy's like, no, we want to see it all in real time. In real time. So call them out. Call the United Cajun Navy out. Ask them for the credentials, who they are, how many force, what exactly they're doing. Ask them specifics on what they're doing. Now, I don't want to sit around and just lurk and try to uh, expose them or, you know, I said what I had to say. I'm out here at a different location with other groups of people. Dude, be honest. You couldn't expose anything unless it's yourself. That's the only thing you've ever exposed is yourself. That's it. Trying to find this young man. We have other leads. We're actually trying to actually find him, no. not be a facade inside a fake thing. Now, I, I do generally believe that the searches over the weekend were genuine. It was a genuine heart. People are looking. But I'm telling you, I communicated a little bit with the sheriff's office there. They've responded. Uh, they've responded to some tips that we got our way that we've related back. They acknowledged it and passed it forward. They are aware of this group. Maybe they'll come out and speak and say, hey, stop with the BS. Maybe they support them. I don't know. Maybe they're going to come out and tell all of you clowns to go home and shut the fuck up and let the professionals do the job of finding Sebastian because that's what really should happen. And law enforcement needs to start charging all these people. Maybe I'm 100% wrong with whatever I'm saying. Maybe I'm 100% wrong. I'm telling you the United Cajun Navy is a scam. They're scams. They're opportunists. And I'm telling you, JLR Investigates is a scam, is a fraud. Griff's off the back of missing children's cases, has a proven past of identity theft, has spent time in federal prison for impersonating people and doing all sorts of shit. Don't believe me? Go check it out. There's awareness, JLR, doing just what you're doing. You're welcome. They're in for themselves. They want you to sign up. They want you to sign up. You know why? They want you to sign up so you get on their email list. So then they can try to solicit funds from you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Help us. Language of Horses, did you answer me what you thought has changed about him? I'm genuinely curious. Like, genuinely curious what people think has changed about this man. And how the fuck can you guys think that he has changed? I'm really not understanding. But then again, I don't understand how... <sighs> I'll leave that for this second. Donate. Be part of our team. It's not organized. And you don't need an organized search for it. They're not the professionals. They were trying to say on their site, we need it organized so we don't contaminate evidence or something. They're not law enforcement. Oh, my God. Can you imagine people actually trained in search and rescue not wanting to contaminate potential scenes? No. No fucking way. Law enforcement didn't co-sign it. People are just out there trying to find on their own initiative this young man that's missing. I, I, I see how you guys get it. So he has such a fucking disgusting chat. I have to say like his chat, I go in there and I just laugh. I laugh and I laugh and I laugh because they are the same fucking people that call what is happening at the border an invasion. Like that's the level of fucking bullshit. So I'm just saying, and 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 I think some people, we've been in the chat, I've been raising the uh, red flags. Who calls the police on someone that's out there trying to find? Everyone knows on- Dude, you've been raising red flags since the year you were born. You are a fucking walking red flag, JLR. Can you please change the color of your fucking JLR investigates hats to red because you are the red flag. This channel, we've been doing the right thing for the last week. We've been doing the right thing. Yo, I said on my live streams, I fall back. If they find something, I specifically say, we're going to fall back. We will not. If the, anything is found that's crazy, we're not going to show it. Oh, except they'll plant a water bottle at a scene. Wasn't he in on that? I'm almost positive he was in on planting a water bottle at the scene where uh, Brian Laundry was found. Wasn't he in on that? And didn't they show that live stream? I don't put cameras up in people's faces. I just tag along and share what's going on. They don't want that because they don't want it. They don't want the public to know how they operate and who they are.
in person. Online, yeah, it sounds good. United Cajun Navy's there helping. Da, da, da. They're not the <laughs> He's even fucking making noises. He's so bent out of shape. I kind of love this. <laughs> there, there's many offshoots of the United Cajun Navy. Or uh, many, many offshoots of Cajun Navy. This group here are no good. They're no good people. They're no You know, I am waiting, Denise. I am waiting for him to pull the Christian nationalism shit. I am waiting for it. But so far, he hasn't done that. That's Betty's stick so far. Good people. Do your due diligence. Do your own research. Prove me wrong. Change my mind. It's so disgusting, Vic. It is so fucking foul and disgusting that they're doing this again to another case. It is Georgia all over again. It is Georgia, which he wasn't even in Georgia. He was helping run the show from behind the scenes because he couldn't go. But he was having Betty and telling Betty to get out there and stay out there and stuff. And that's the way he does. But then he was pushing off misinformation in Marvon's case at the same time. He does so much. He is disgusting and vile. And the harm that they do to these cases nonstop is very major. One of these days, something major is going to happen and it's going to cost one of these victims and their families justice that they deserve. But that's what's going on. I don't understand how I, uh, you know, they call they said they called a frivolous complaint. They said, oh, it's trespassing and causing a disturb. I'm sitting in my car. Literally guy comes up to me and tells me to leave. I come out and call him a scammer and then I leave. And then I get surrounded by six cops. And then, but I thought you were there on the ground searching for Sebastian. Like you were sitting here ranting for thirty minutes. That's thirty minutes you could have been searching for Sebastian if this was all about the kid, right? If this was all about the kid, that's what you should have been doing instead of sitting here bitching. You and Dolly seem to have a lot of time on your hands to bitch about a lot of stupid shit lately. We're gonna get to Betty next. And then they were all like at ease immediately. You know what I mean? And we're just chilling. You know, they run my name, whatever, like that. And they're like, "Oh, you're good." And the, and the, the sergeant came over and said, "Watch your chattel, dude. You're good." Just oh. chill from it, you know? Thank you. Where Where is that clip? Where's the clip of the sergeant saying that he watches your channel? You're good. You're good. Where's that clip, JLR? You know you record everything. Let's see that clip. And I went shook all their hands. Have a great day. I said, I'm not going near there. I'm not going back there. I don't even want to be a part of that. And I bet you 20 bucks say I absolutely know who the fuck you are. Because you got, listen, and somebody, some people might say, oh, JLR, you're a hypocrite because you're a scam or whatever. I made my stakes. I own up and do it. My heart's in the right place. I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to do good. And I'll call it out if I see it. Where? Where are you trying to do good? By grifting off of a missing child. Where are you trying to do good? Where are you trying to do good? By pushing off false propaganda at the border. Where? Tell me again. Where the fuck are you doing good? I'll wait. You don't know your fucking... Ugh. Oh, be nice, Becky. I'll call it out if I see it. Now they can, they have every opportunity. Maybe they'll come up and refute what I say or, or back it up or share their credentials and share who they are, share what they're really doing. Instead of all this mixed signals and mixed stuff. On if this motherfucker talks about credentials one more goddamn time, I swear to God, JLR, shut up. You sound like a freaking idiot. You're a babbling idiot right now. On their line, they're, 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 they're manipulated. They're, they play word salad. They play word salad with their statements on what they're doing. They're not doing anything. You know, and that's the thing, Denise. He could absolutely have a social media presence and he could make money in a very rational way. But exploiting victims and their tragedies and children especially seem to be their thing. And they only target certain demographics of children to specifically white, blonde, you know, families that have some funding behind them ones that are in main media attention. They seem to always point out that when Tennessee has many missing children, there are many missing people all over the United States. They could do this legit. There's actually legit true crime channels like Duty Ron. Uh, Equisearch does amazing work. There's a lot of people that actually do it right. JLR, on the other hand, he's just a grifter. Your typical con man, in my opinion. What are they going to do? Remains to be seen, but we do have eyes on them if i'm not there we have eyes on them we have eyes we're oh we know the tricks we know what's going on he knows what's going on because he pulls the same bullshit in my opinion he knows exactly the playbook of how they go about these because he does the same thing i pray for seth rogers man that that dude you know you're gonna and and, and here's what's happening too you're gonna get these people that are gonna come and leech they're going to come and leech. Bad, bad actors for their own agenda are going to come and try to leech 
by around him. I don't want to see that, man. Not not. And that's exactly what Dolly and Betty are doing. And you, JLR. That's what you guys are up to. No different. Same old shit. Different day. Different case. Not when someone's on their most vulnerable state, whatever. Like, I got a soft spot for this guy. I got a soft spot for this guy. Because I got to know him as a person out the park. He told me a lot of details I will never share. Just got to know him as a person, man. Him and some of the volunteers, people around him that are really like protecting him. But I, I, I warned them. I told them. They hear me. They know. They hear me. They understand. They understand. This guy warning. Oh, my God. So we're going to still look for uh, Sebastian. <sighs> we still have a lot of things that we're looking into. The Proudfoots, uh, as some of you might or might not know, the Proudfoots are on their way. Uh, they're actually in Mississippi right now. At a, at a campground just south of Memphis, you know, and it's interesting because, uh, you know, Christopher was working at Memphis St. Jude's Hospital. He has he acknowledged that. He said it out of his own mouth. Um, the campsite is just south in Mississippi, right across the board. I'm not going to say the location. Um, have post, posted pictures um, online about, you know, what it is. Now, is he just going to go back to work there? The question is, why is Katie, why is Katie out there with him? She's extremely express that she doesn't like probably because of safety concerns i mean because there's a bunch of fucking whack jobs who have past criminal records roaming around their fucking neighborhood unhinged like this after being just asked to leave private property you're fucking unhinged as hell probably a safety concern why she left i mean that would be my guess the online stuff what people are saying she'd be there alone um, but it's interesting because, you know, at the be very beginning, wasn't it that they were staying home waiting for if Sebastian comes home? Well, why did they, why did they both leave the home? It's been a month. It's been a month. I mean, travel, uh, three and a half hours away. Why are they three and a half hours away where they are? Why is it, in you know, is she going to go back? What's happening? Um, in the meantime, you know, the, the parents of Christopher Proudfoot has been going back to that house, checking on that house and. You know, we actually we actually reported it to the TBI. Uh, we were out there and uh, the parents are out there taking pictures of everybody, whatever, like that suspiciously. And or maybe they're just they, they want to know who's around their house. But uh, we have examples of people that have come forward to us and say that they've been around the neighborhood looking for Sebastian and the Proudfoot's um, parents have been following them around. Maybe they're spying on behalf of uh, Christopher. Maybe oh my gosh, no. They couldn't be taking pictures of the creeps that are taking pictures of them. No, say it isn't so. Maybe they're just nosy. Maybe they just want to, you know, know who's who. I don't know what they're doing. You know, I tried to ask them what's up. They jumped in the car. They left after they were chasing me. It was pretty wild stuff, you know. But we're, we're I'm not, definitely don't want to try to. They were chasing him. Oh my God. Beat myself into some drama. And again, this you is are nothing but drama, JLR. It's not about me. All I'm saying is, as boots on the ground, I feel like the audience has to, you know, hear my version, hear hear what I have to say, and you know, you know, you can choose to believe me or you choose not to. Um, I'm just putting out the warning signs. Hopefully, other people get it. There is people that do get it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna we'll continue to search, it. bring awareness, and do what we can on JLR Investigates. Good morning, everyone. Uh, late night. It's been pouring down rain uh, in this area for the last, uh, since last night. It's still kind of like damp out. God, he's a baby. I'm in the Jackson, Jackson area. Uh, this is a halfway point between um, Nashville and uh, Memphis. You know, there's a lot of chatter around there about possible places where if Sebastian was put in a truck or taken somewhere, you know, the driving route from you know, from Memphis to Nashville. There's lots of woods in between. Here's more of that speculation station. Highway 412. This has never been about Sebastian for any one of these motherfuckers. Let's be clear on that. This has never been about Sebastian. They are not victim focused. They are not victim advocates. They do nothing for the victims besides exploit them. Parallel a little bit to uh, Interstate 40, Interstate 40, a lot of woods, a lot of off trails or something. Sebastian's out there, folks. Uh, Sebastian's out there. Another thing I just want to uh, say that I um, I don't know if I repeated this oh, oh, um, before, but I was always dumbfounded and and, and wondering about the um, the landfill search, right? Remember they went to a landfill and searched it with a warrant. Well, I was always wondering why is trash from Tennessee going up to Kentucky? Well, I found some new information out um, that 
Proudfoot's have their neighborhood, right? They have their neighborhood. And then right next to their neighborhood is another neighborhood. Oh, this is that breaking information that Spanky was putting out yesterday, that their garbage was extremely heavy in the construction dumpsters around the house because there's construction going on in the neighborhood. You know, all that, you know, Spanky, that's what Spanky's breaking information yesterday was. How the fuck do you guys know how much their garbage weighs? But that is going under construction, but it's a separate neighborhood separate road to go in i guess at the top you can maybe connect through eventually but as of now it's like two different developments right i can't prove how he's funded but from my understanding it's sugar mamas the trash in the actual proudfoot's neighborhood actually does not go to kentucky it goes to uh gallatin or to a transfer uh site in gallatin and nashville they said two places it goes um in their neighborhood but the next construction site neighborhood no. it actually goes to kentucky because you're dealing with bigger dumpsters not just you know just trash of people in the trash cans out in the street and things over in the construction there's these giant 30 40 ton you know those they're called roll off dumpsters you fucking clown big giant thing so i think all the trash of course he has never probably worked a manual labor job in his life there goes the kentucky it's interesting that as we know now that the authorities chose to do a warrant in the one in kentucky that took you to the construction site and not the warrants for the landfills in uh, Tennessee, where, you know, the neighborhood trash is. So do they have something? Is it synonymous or connected in any way to those lights? Um, one thing interesting to me is, um, you know, going in back of the Proudfoot's house, go over the next yard, boom, you're in this development. There's some cul-de-sacs there. I saw a barn there at the end of a cul-de-sac. I seen the, seen the uh, dumpsters. I'm just wondering, you know, was Sebastian Lord or carried out there to that bat next development in one of those cul-de-sacs and either something maybe in the dumpster, some stuff maybe in the dumpster or put in a vehicle and taken to another. That's the only thing that I could. That's the situation. Didn't law enforcement say that they found nothing in their search of the landfill? Situation, a scenario that we're running with right now. Oh, yeah. Um, those type of possibilities there. Um, the scenarios, it's a it's like process of elimination, but it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder, right? But I think we talked enough this morning. I don't want to waste you guys' time. Uh, share this message out and uh, sub to the channel, like hit the notification button. Um, still in the area, you still be paying. And if anything breaks, um, you know, like if somebody gets their house warranted or if someone, uh, you know, um, gets put in cuffs, or something. I'm pretty much in a in a in an area where I can get there pretty quickly. You know, we run to the scene real quickly and pop out the uh, live streaming. And uh, believe it or not, I I I, I think Cajun Navy should be putting cuffs. Actually, um, oh, the irony of this! I thought you just said that you didn't even need to live stream. You could bring awareness without having to live stream. And now you're just saying you pop out with the live stream instantly if there's breaking information. Honestly, um, they should be able to open their oh. books and how they're getting their funding and who's paying them and whatnot uh you got a guy out there soliciting i do too denise i find most true crime channels to be absolutely fraudulent truthfully and donations with a giant air boat oh is he gonna put that air boat, boat in the water where are you gonna put it in you gonna do a water search i mean do you think a water search would be good for this case i don't think so can you imagine no this guy just has his boat hooked up because they just came back from the cumberland oh my god no way that would be common sense though i don't think so all right, we'll talk soon. Share the message. JLR investigates. Everyone have a great day. Maybe Don't worry, we will talk soon, JLR, because we're not done watching you and laughing at you because of what a travesty you are and what a fucking disturbing mess this is. We're not laughing at what they're doing because it's actually really fucking disgusting. But we're going to go now to bullhorn bullshit. Little Miss up in arms over here kathy was just playing this i'm gonna play some of it but this right here my friends is called betty on a rampage and this is some funny bullshit watching them lose their shit. it's not funny because of how horrible they are treating this case and how disgusting it is but watching them melt i do bring brings me some joy i have to say Oh, she didn't even give us a 10 minute intro this morning. Good morning, TikTok Bullhorn Betty. I am unsure um, how many people are up this early. It's not even 5 a.m. yet. 
but I'm coming live with our breaking daily updates. This is what I do every single day for all the beautiful people out here on TikTok, for the ones that are joining. I just wanted to say that I started this whole subscription. If you guys want to subscribe to the Bullhorn Betty channel, you may. I'm speeding her up because this is insufferable. I did not realize it was on uh, subscribers only. I'm not tech savvy on here and I signed up for all this stuff because we're building a channel. I, you know, go, go across this country to do a bunch of stuff. So, you know, I do anything to kind of generate a revenue. Oh, oh, right there. She's telling y'all out front what she's doing. She's attempting to build a channel. She's attempting to bring in a revenue in any way, shape or form. She's telling you right up front, at least there's some honesty right there. She's attempting to build a channel to grift off of more people. Okay. There's that. And I did not realize this was set up where you guys could not communicate unless you were subscribers. And I never want to do that to anybody. I want the people that subscribe monthly that want to support us monthly to support us, but I didn't want it to jeopardize the uh, channel or the show. So uh, somebody had reached out to me. It's like, I'm not a member. I couldn't comment. I'm like, it shouldn't be set up that way. And so this morning I'm like, let me just check to make sure they didn't do anything behind the scenes or something for you guys. And I just want to apologize. It does look like it was on only subscriber only mode. I'm tar I'm really sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. I didn't do it. I think it was just an automatic toggle from the system. So I apologize to you guys. I apologize to you guys, but it should be fixed now. So you guys should be able to say good morning to me. So it's nice to see. Holy crap. We got like almost 100 people in chat right now at before 5 a.m. We're over 100 people in chat right now at 5 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Guys, you guys are ridiculous. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> so let's just get on with our daily, uh, our breaking daily updates. Um, good morning. Breaking breaking daily update morning happy tuesday guys um so elijah vu i'm going to start off with elijah vu he's We're the gonna fast forward thing of evidence okay let me go here changing it ever so slightly is because you can't see all the stuff when it's on a still um now i'm going to say this flat out i find this to be absolutely disturbing because she's going to go into a whole rant same with jlr meanwhile putting sebastian's face there again is no need for you fucking people to continue to put his name. I don't care if you're calling these people out or not. You don't, unless you're just highlighting his missing stuff, stop, stop doing that. You're no different than them. It makes me just, ugh. Related to what I want to talk to you about, this is uh, Sebastian Rogers. He's a 15 year old autistic boy. This case is breaking uh, apart on, on TikTok. He's a 15 year old with autism. It's it. People are wanting to know what's going on. It's 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 going. Crazy. And why does that matter? Because he's more than his diagnosis. These kids are more than their diagnosis. And you fucking fools that don't know a goddamn thing continue to minimize these children. Crazy on YouTube. This is a social media case. This is a case where the Cajun Navy is involved. We're going to get to the Cajun Navy in a second because I've got a message for them. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not supporting anything with this Cajun Navy. I'm not going to be raising money for them. I will not do anything when it comes to the Cajun Navy with their conduct they've done. Uh, two of my people, uh, not my people, they're people I've, I've worked with. Um, and the Cajun Navy, because two of her FWVs, as they were out there, called the cops on them, were absolutely disgusting to them, were absolutely rude to them, and absolutely think they take over this entire investigation. They don't have the authority to do so, but we're going to get into that in my bitch fest into that in just a few moments. So you guys want to stay uh, stay tuned. So Sebastian Rogers disappeared on the same day that Maddie Soto disappeared on February 26th. Stories are a little different, but you know we still believe that the parents are somewhat involved. If, if you guys have any questions, I'll get to your questions as soon as I'm wrapped up here. However, law enforcement has not confirmed any bit of that. Again, pure speculation. So just bear with me. Um, his mom says that he, that he doesn't have any friends, not on social media. So all these other outside influences and, 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 and dangers are not here in this case. The only person that was allegedly in the home was the mother at the time he disappeared. I really don't believe it. We're hearing a bunch of rumors from she has a drinking problem to she's having an affair with somebody in the uh, neighborhood. Again, th that again, nothing but salacious rumors with no fact basis whatsoever. It's not what I'm finding. I know there's a lot of people you believe what but she says. That's not what she's finding. However, she's going to continue to put out and encourage people to run with speculation and wild rumors of that. What you want to believe, but I'm not out here to lie to my audience about anything. I don't need a click and a view. Um, I do what I do and I'm going to continue to do it, whether people watch what I do or not. Right. So she doesn't need to click in the view, but in the first two minutes of this, she told us she was channel building for a revenue stream. So I really don't have any anything. There's nothing in me that that need for me to 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 um, 
you know, now let me remind you, for those of you that might be new to her, I don't think anybody in here at this time is probably new to her, but she herself could not pass a background check either. She could not get credentials. She is a menace to society, in my opinion, also. And she is another orange Jesus worshiping, fucking propaganda spreading, misinformation groaning. Manipulate my audience or say something that's untrue. So in this particular case, he's been missing. Mom and dad know nothing, supposedly, but he couldn't possibly have been injured by anybody else. This, the biological father, Seth Rogers, is going crazy, has been out searching, taking off time from work. He's hurt himself. He's injured himself. He's getting very little assistance. And the, the biological mom, Katie Proudfoot, his mother and her husband uh, and his stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, have not been at any searches. Their behavior has been very odd. Um, they Their behavior. Their behavior. Meanwhile... This is a fucking random bitch on the internet who has fucking probably ate more bleach in the last three months than anybody should ever be around. Dying that fucking hair of hers. But she thinks that their behavior is weird. Their behavior is odd. Sit the fuck down, Betty. They've been doing some weird, uneasy things. Now they're saying the reason why they ran off is because they heard people were going to be in front of their house. First of all, there's only one person that usually shows up in front of your house, and it's typically me, Bullhorn Betty. And I have said it time and time again, I'm not going to their house. So are they using that as an excuse, or is somebody actually trolling them? And if they're trolling them, you know, I guarantee it's a hate channel on YouTube because that's what these idiots on YouTube do. And uh, actually, the hate channels don't go out there in front of their homes and make a mockery. The hate channels focus on you pieces of shit. They're utilizing resources. And we're not really hate channels on Facebook. Or I mean, I, I'll be honest. I'm an equal opportunity hater <laughs> on law enforcement to over some petty YouTube bullshit. And so I really, truly believe it was the hate channels that trolled this family and, and got them out of the house. I'm also finding out that these hate channels on YouTube are actually utilizing much needed law enforcement research by calling up to law enforcement, law enforcement research resources, dumbass resources and telling them these other creators that are coming into town. Yes, I know. I cannot believe that they did, but they don't care. But as soon as you show up, they'll say, Oh my God, they're calling them getting law enforcement resources out there. Um, no, you guys are doing it. You don't realize that. I mean, you're the one picking up the phone and Kyle 911. I mean, it's not me. It's you. I would hope if anybody's calling, they're using a non-emergency number. I mean, chances are but so these idiots on youtube have these petty um petty oh. squabbles with other creators on youtube and it's all over jealousy and money it's stupidity you know it's ain't nobody fucking jealous of you ain't nobody worried about your fucking money make your coin do it rationally and ethically those things you cannot do childish shit and uh so two two of the creators are out there and um trying to search for this kid now you're talking about they haven't searched not at all Driving around in their car, screaming themselves, screaming other people searching is not them searching. Sorry, got to call it like it is. Out to um, searchers. I mean, they have their channels, their news organization type alternative media channels, but they're searchers. That means that they've been to searches. They've been to coordinated searches with law enforcement. They've conducted their own searches. Neither one of them are SAR trained or certified, which is search and rescue trained. None of them have credentials. None of them have ever attempted to even put themselves through continuing ed. This is why I did flex on them. And this is why I have such a problem with this, because it doesn't take much to go and educate yourself and get involved. If you really want to be involved, do it the fucking right way. These fucking fools do not. They've been out in the field multiple times. This is their job. This is what they do. They're not SAR certified, but we're looking for a 15 year old boy. I'm not. Well, she even admits that they're not SAR certified. Neither are you going out there to do a grid search to look for evidence. Okay. That's not what I, I'm not equipped to do that. That's not my job to do that. If I see something, I have latex gloves and flags. If I see something, I'm not out there looking for evidence. I'm out there looking for a 15 year old boy. It's not rocket science. And, um, so anyways, Katie and Chris, this is Chris. This is the stepfather. And I no, well, actually what she's out there doing is screaming for that revenue stream. As you notice down here, there's circles. And the reason why there's circles is those are scratch marks all up and down his arm. This is the first interview he gave after Sebastian Rogers disappeared. And many of my uh, counterparts and friends on my social media platforms was reaching out and sending me this picture and saying, did you see his arm? Well, I've been collaborating. Um, oh, I said I would do this. Oh, hold on. Let me let her finish. Um, and help, help like sharing information with another creator on YouTube. His name is uh, Justin for all spanky 
and his name's Justin. It's and I don't like to say Justin. Everybody here on TikTok knows Justin on TikTok. Totally different person. Um, uh, just as sweet and just as nice, right? Uh, but just totally different person. And um, he's the one that that sat there. One of them circled these, but he's the one that told me that Chris called him when that photo of Chris, you know, being at the restaurant circulated. And Chris was more concerned about who took that photo than he was Sebastian. He went on Nancy Grace, him and Katie Proudfoot went on Nancy Grace last night and said basically um, that they. Okay. They're circling the cuts on his arm. I said, I was going to show this earlier. So I have a dog. I don't know if you guys can even see it over here. You can probably see some of the skin right there. Dog scratch right there dog scratch right there. I don't know if you can see them in my tattoos or not, but um, I have fucking dogs and I play with them all the time and get beat up all the fucking time. And I have a cat that does the same thing. You'll hear why I said this in a minute. She is absolutely fucking ridiculous. They didn't know that they called the Cajun Navy, even though the Cajun Navy was on. I don't think they realized the Cajun Navy was um, a placeholder excuse me, a placeholder on Nancy Grace last night until after they told If you have animals and you play with them and you don't get accidentally scratched here and there, then I don't know what the fuck you're doing besides wearing long sleeves because damn, I get beat the shit out of their story. And they try to say again that they uh, call the Cajun Navy and speaking to the president. Well, um, Dennis, I think his name's Dennis, or maybe it's David Thrasher. Dennis Thrasher or David Thrasher, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, <clears throat> Thrasher was on, on Nancy Grace's show and basically said, we haven't talked to them, but we've been in contact with Seth Rogers. Um, so I'm still unsure if they've even had contact with uh, the United Cajun Navy. His mom and dad are chasing anybody that's going into that neighborhood out. They're literally chasing him down. I haven't made it there yet, but I'd like I'd like Mama Dukes to come out there and disrupt my um, my walk because I will be searching around there and I will be on public property and I will be conducting myself in a lawful legal manner. And um, I hope nobody interferes with my um, peaceful enjoyment of walking on peacefully down a road on public property. And my aunt, my my statement to his mother is, if you see me, you don't want to disrupt my walk, babe. I, you might want to do that to JLR and Dolly Vision, and, but you're not going to come at me like that, honey, buddy. It's not going to happen. And I'll put you right in your place, too. And I'll do it live and publicly. And I, you know, I don't mind embarrassing people when I'm out here in the field. I don't mind doing it. I don't want to do it. This is not something I want to do, but I'm not here for them. I'm here to find information about a 15-year-old autistic boy that is missing. Now, <clears throat> now we got a, a gist of the family. All right, hold on. We're going to unpack that right there for a minute. First and foremost, again, he is a 15-year-old child with autism. He is not an autistic boy. He is much more than a child with autism. He is a very, very loved 15-year-old who happens to have autism. Okay, that's it. That's all. Stop trying to diminish who he is as a person because of a diagnosis. Fuck you, bitch. And I'm the horse you rode in on. Secondly, bitch... Shut the fuck up. You don't scare a goddamn person. I wish you would. I wish your fucking ass would pull up out in front of my door with that bullhorn. I wish you fucking would. You're going to come across the wrong one one of these days, and it's coming up very soon. Because you are so arrogant and so egotistical, and your fucking mouth overloads your goddamn ass so much. You do not scare a goddamn person. And how dare you talk to the parents? of a missing child this way when law enforcement hasn't even said they have any involvement in it or the grandparents of them who are trying to protect their children. You should be thankful that their parents are trying to protect them who are trying to protect their son. Fuck out of here, Betty. You don't scare a goddamn person. You and your goddamn bullhorn. Woo, whoop de shit. Do we believe them? Do we believe what they're saying on Nancy Grace? I do not. I do not believe anything that they're saying. Um, she left. No, I'm not royally triggered mystery at all. Honestly, this is just how these people are. This is the shit that comes out of my head every day when I watch these people. These people are gutter fucking trash. Sorry. It is what it is. These are the lowest scumbags who fucking milk our society for any brain power all of us have. This comprehension and level of thinking that this is acceptable behavior by people who claim they are trying to help a special needs child while diminishing him to a diagnosis, while trying to blame the parents for shit because one of them had a tussle with a dog and he's got scratches on. They live in such a fucking altered reality. Can you imagine being such a perfect person like they all are? Can you imagine? And then you'll hear them say, well, I've made mistakes in my past. Where, where, I mean, we all know you have, but they try to make themselves out to be, and they compare themselves in these cases that they're so great. And so if they were a parent, this would never happen. I hate that any family 
or parent of a missing child or adult, any of it has to go through what they have to go through because of this fucking arrogant bunch of opportunistic pieces of trash. It's her baby behind. She told me if it bothers you that I call him trash, well, buckle up because I've been really nice for almost two years and I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of the entitlement that these people have while continuing to push off misinformation and harm these cases. That is all they continue to do. They're not victim centered. They're not trained. She claims she's a victim advocate while fucking praising somebody who is civilly liable for sexual assault. You want me to say it like it is? Here you go. Sorry. Not sorry. The truth is the truth. Told the whole world that they can't leave their house. And the first time they have an opportunity to leave their house, they run away. They don't even bother searching for this boy. And they want the whole world to believe that they're innocent. And Nancy Grace is on a fact-finding mission. And God bless her. Because if you guys know anything about me, I was just talking about how everybody that brings these people on there, they're too busy accusing them and not getting enough facts about the day. And um, Nancy Grace went on... Um, she went, she did her thing yesterday and she stayed factual. She's like, you know, that we're not in a place of judgment. I'm on a fact finding mission. By the way, to the chat in here, you guys, there's a lot of new names popping in, a lot of new alts popping in that have some controversial shit to say. Let them say it. They expose themselves. I could give two fucks less about what they say because the truth is the truth. And if it offends people, I, I don't care. My give a fuck is completely broken. I don't give a shit. As somebody who talks and walks with victims all the time and fucking here's how much horror they have been through without this type of shit involved. I can't even imagine what they would have been through had these people been around during some of their situations. Fuck out of here. Yes, yes, and yes. Love Nancy Grace. And let me tell you about Nancy Grace, okay? Many of you guys know that I'm absolutely in love with Nancy Grace. I, I think she's like my BFF. There's two, there's a few idols I have in the world. Nancy Grace is one of the idols I have in the world. The other idol I have in the world is, I don't know. What a fucking wonderful world to live in that Nancy Grace, Nancy Griffin Grace is your idol. Shit, at least she can pass a background check though. Can you imagine? And rest in peace to Beth Chapman because that's who she's also going to say, but she looks more like Dog the Bounty Hunter than Beth Chapman. So I guess there's that. Well, if you guys remember Beth Chapman, it was Dog the Bounty Hunter, Dwayne Chapman's wife. Okay, Beth Chapman. If you've noticed anything about some of the people that I love and adore, they are bold women. Okay, they are bold women that don't take shit. If that tells you anything about my personality and uh, where I come from, and you know what, both of those girl, both of those women are amazing women. They love God um, and they're bold. They don't oh, here comes the fucking please, please somebody take me out now. Oh, here we go with the trash evangelist shit. Welcome to fucking the Joyce Myers of twenty twenty fucking four. Don't take shit, you know. Um, I'm a godly person, oh, Lord. but you don't want to fuck with me. <laughs> You know, you don't want to. I'm a godly person, but you don't want to fuck with me. Bitch, sit down. Sit down. Just shut up. Fucking church would blow up into fucking flames if you walked in it. Same with me. Okay, that's why I stay out. So they don't have to cash in on their insurance policies. Shut the hell up. Especially out there in the field. I get people, people are like, more Betty's mean, right? More Betty's mean. Like, I get that all the time. She's mean. Oh, well. You know what? I'm the sweetest damn person. Nothing like that hypocritical Christian bullshit coming right at you. You know, I treat you as you treat me. <laughs> but they don't judge anybody. They love one another. They are accepting of all. They lift people up. This is why I have a problem with Christianity. <laughs> yeah, I can be uh, I can be mean. I will send you back home to your mama crying. Okay, I will send you back home to your mama crying. So yeah, I can be, I can be mean. Okay. So I hope, uh, you know, his mama and daddy don't, they see me, they just, uh, it's bullhorn, Betty, just leave her be because I will drop a bullhorn on your ass. <laughs> like, you know, like I, these other people out there, you just, you can fuck with them. Can you imagine being like, what is she like 40, 45, 46? I, I know she's a couple years older than me. I'm 41. So whatever the case may be, but can you imagine your claim to fame being, I'm going to drop a bullhorn on your ass. Like, can you imagine that's your life goal? Like, yeah, I'm known for a fucking bullhorn and disturbing people's peace. The fuck yeah. And being buddies with fucking fraudsters like Mike Lindell. Yeah. Go me. But you don't want to fuck with me. Okay. Um, and all joking aside, all joking aside, they ran away. Um, they left their boy behind. They're missing autistic boy that they want the whole world to believe that they care about. Okay. I'm sorry. It's, their missing child named Sebastian Rogers, who unfortunately, once again, has autism, is a child with autism.
fuck you once again, Betty. It's disgusting. It's disgusting to me. It's disgusting that a mom would leave her son. I don't care if you had meat in your front yard with a fucking bullhorn. If you didn't do it, you you stay there and fight for your son. You don't be a coward and run away. You know why? Because that's that. this is pressure. Brush, pressure breaks pipes and you guys are already breaking apart. You are not going to last. You fucked up. I mean, they did. They, they messed up. They messed up so bad. I think we are seeing pressure breaking pipes right now, and it's called Betty's Pipes. Uh, they messed up with their statements, their timelines now all over the place. They're adding people that weren't there before. Um, they're, they're not assisting in the searches. Uh, they're threatening the biological dad with a lawsuit over money. Um, and they ran away from home when people were questioning why they're not out there searching for this boy. Again, it's been a month since he went missing. Law enforcement has been heavily involved. There was a ton of certified actual search and rescue teams out there right after it happened. They're leaving the area for safety measures because there's fucking whack jobs like Dolly Vision and the creepy fucking JLR. And I'm sorry, again, I find it to be a little bit of a fetish for them to go out there and harass these victims and their families. I really do. And it is what it is. Again, I'm not saying they're P-files or anything of that nature, but I do think that they get a special type of high off of being crime tourists and that I don't know who started that Kathy is where I heard it so thank you to Kathy whoever started the crime tourists spot on um they said that they can't go because law enforcement told them not to leave the home and then after that we found them at a restaurant and when we called them out on their shit they couldn't handle the pressure they packed up their rig and they left town don't so we're stalking the parents of a missing child with no law enforcement saying that they're responsible whatsoever don't worry. We know they're in Mississippi. We know they're at the Yogi Bear campground. We know where they are. At. Um, they need to know that wherever they go, people on social. So now she is fully putting out their location and their information. And again, this is already out here publicly. So that's why I restreamed it, because hopefully the parents, well, I'm sure they know by now that she put their information out and compromised their safety once again. And tell me again how they're out there helping for Sebastian, doxing their mother, doxing his stepdad. How is that helping anything? Social media, we've blown this up so much. There's not a place in the United States that they can go right now to hide their pretty little faces, okay? Everybody and their mom is gonna be reaching out to a social media creator to let them know where you are at, my friend. And it's because you should be out there searching for your son instead of hiding away from everybody else in this world. That shows- Have you ever heard that a lot of times during these active searches that they do not want the family involved? There's a reason for that because in case they actually come upon something, a lot of times they actually refuse to let families partake in these searches. Does that make sense to anybody? Does anybody in here actually have been on these searches where they actually remove the parents or don't want the parents out there because of these reasons? That shows guilt and it shows shame. The only people making these parents look like they're guilty is these parents themselves. That's it. That's it. So Seth Roger, little Irish girl, it is against terms of service. So is putting out misinformation. So is harassment and all this other stuff. But getting YouTube to do anything about it is nearly impossible. Uh, Betty called me a year, a year and a half ago, I think it is by now, and threatened me after they doxxed me fully, had my full legal name and fucking titles of videos and stuff. And they get away with all sorts of shit. They do this on the daily. So uh, YouTube doesn't really do much. Again, it's here nor there, but it is, it's ridiculous. There's like I said, the bio, um, bio dad has brought in the Cajun Navy. Actually, if you heard Nancy Grace, it's because of the social media creators that reached out to him. Those same social media creators that they are being disrespectful to, that they keep talking down to. Let me tell you, Cajun Navy, I'll tell you this right oh, now. There she goes. I'm a nice person. I really am. And I hope to God that when I get out there, um, you know, I'll do my own thing. I don't need to be around you. Okay. I don't need to click in a view like that. Okay. But let me tell you something. You come at me like you just went after Dolly and JLR. I'm not only going to blow you out of the water. We're going to start talking about your past history, which you don't want everybody knowing about how many times you threaten your volunteers or how many times you guys go after your volunteers and, and, and try to have them put in jail and try to put protective orders when you piss everybody off. So I'm not going to go into the Cajun Navy's history right now about their deplorable conduct. How many times have you been removed from sites or how many times has ordinances been put in place and laws been put in place because of your behavior, Betty? Just a quick question, because I'm sure it's more than once. In fact, I know in Georgia, they put out signs and ordinances because of your loud ass mouth and all of the bullshit that you and your buddies were doing in Georgia. And I think Florida enacted a law because of all your disruption in the neighborhoods. Isn't that true? 
I'm pretty sure. And their unprofessional conduct when they're out on these searches. I'm not going to go there, Cajun Navy. You know why? Because I'm Bullhorn Betty, and I want to make sure that when I get into town, that me and you work well together. Okay? So I listen to the entitlement she has. I'm Bullhorn Betty. No, your name's Andrew Griffin, bitch. And you proudly say that all over the fucking internet. And you are nothing but a con woman, in my opinion, who pushes off misinformation and continues to grift off the back of tragedies. That's it. Period. Point blank. Bullhorn Betty is known for being a grifting con woman, in my opinion. Well, I'm not going to go into those types of things and I'm not going to be hurting your feelings or being disrespectful to the Cajun Navy or their un un unsavory history. But I am a searcher. Speaking of unsavory history. <laughs> I'm a professional person. I have professional. <laughs> Sorry, guys. What the hell? <laughs> I have a channel with a huge platform, several channels with platforms. And the Cajun Navy is going to either respect me or be disrespectful. Just like her Betty for president channel. Respectful to me. But I will caution them. No. When Bullhorn Betty's there and you're disrespectful to me, then I go off. And when I go off, I make truthfully, Betty, with all the disrespect, with all the fucking disrespect, shut the fuck up. Seriously, this is embarrassing. I hope you rewatch this and go, oh, yeah, I probably should have said all that. Oh, my God. Make sure I follow every single law oh. to, a, to a T and make sure that when I go out there, I dot my eyes. And I would like to make sure. Absolutely, she is. She is absolutely associated with people who are on the Southern, Southern Poverty Law sites known as terrorist groups, such as the Proud Boys. Yes, she has affiliations with the Proud Boys and white supremacists. She's also buddies with Mike Lindell, the fraudster himself. And she is a proud, proud Orange Jesus supporter. Again, not all Orange Jesus supporters are this deranged, and some of them are amazing people. Betty, on the other hand, is that extremist... <laughs> fucking wild group off of them so sure that my efforts are going to sebastian but if you ever talk to me or call law enforcement on me or have handcuffs put on me because i'm doing my job like you did to jlr yesterday i will take my bullhorn and you will be coughing out my sequins on my bullhorn <laughs> i can't even talk she is not betty what is in the water what are her and jlr drinking what has happened to them? They are the fucking balls that they have all of a sudden. For the next year. What? You threaten me when I come out there to give my assistance to looking for a missing kid because you think you run the show. You've got another thing coming. You just threatened them with spitting sequins off your bolt. And we know you ain't going to do anything with that fucking sweet and bullhorn. You're just going to go for the throat. Oh, wait, that's allegedly in my opinion. I don't play those games. But what I would like to tell the Cajun Navy is I am going to be out there and I'm going to be out there working my ass off to search for Sebastian Rogers. Dude, she says she works her ass off even when she's sitting in a chair at her fucking desk. She's working so hard. And I hope that we can work together. But if they think I have to work with them or I owe them some type of duty, no, I don't. You want to call the cops on me? Let me tell you, when I come out to these areas, I don't, I'm not coming out to protest. So I haven't even called my um, civil rights attorneys. I haven't. <laughs> you got bed crump on speed dial? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Y'all, when I heard this on Kathy's earlier, I about split a gut. I was laughing so hard. What the fuck? She's got civil rights attorneys and she can't even afford a goddamn attorney to represent her in this frivolous lawsuit that she brought. Are you fucking kidding me? Betty, nobody believes this shit. Stop. You're making yourself out to be a bigger mockery than you already were. I haven't even put them on. I've got people that are willing to represent me free of charge if they violate my civil rights. Okay, so I'm not even really worried about that. I wasn't. <laughs> She's calling Elena Habba, y'all. Just hold on. She's going to fucking call Rudy Giuliani. Hold on. They're going to take your calls. Going to be doing all that? I wasn't going to be, you know, calling these attorney and stuff like that. But Ooh. now with this nonsense here and knowing that, that the Cajun Navy has called law enforcement on two of uh, the people that I know that are out there right now searching, 
for doing absolutely nothing. They weren't bothering anybody. They weren't doing anything. Oh. They were literally live. I absolutely watched exactly what happened and the harassment Cajun Navy provided them. And so the reason why I'm going on this dissertation is because if the Cajun Navy wants to act like this, I can guarantee social media will ruin that nonprofit. And oh, ho, ho. threatening a nonprofit that searches for missing children. How do you guys feel about that one? I mean, truthfully, with all due respect, there is a lot of fraudulent nonprofits. I have to say that because we all know that is a fact. We all know that there is some fraudulent nonprofits out there, but this is so ridiculous. Dissertation, and she actually pronounced it right. Betty got the dictionary out. And it's not, I'm not going to do it because they're not pissing me off, but they are pissing people off. Um, I'm going to go out there and do my own thing. She's not going to do it. Meanwhile, she just threatened to s make somebody spit out sequins. Betty. And with their permission or without their permission, I don't ask people for permission to do my job. I don't coordinate her job, her job with people like Cajun Navy to do my job. Um, my job. I work very hard for what I what I do. I work for um, the answers to these um, these things. I, and I'm not going to have a pissing contest with a nonprofit organization. What I will do is I will use my platform to say I will never give them one dollar of my support because of their conduct out there. I'm sure they didn't expect a dollar from you. Meanwhile, all you have, you, Betty, you would have to ask your following for a dollar to give them. Come on now. Uh, in this Sebastian Rogers case, what I will do is say I will never support their organization publicly on any of my platform. And any time that they are brought up and associated with a case, I wish them the best. But I will make sure I warn everybody about their conduct with volunteers. That's what I can do as a content creator when you have a problem like Cajun Navy being this disrespectful to social media, which is the one that called you in to come out there to begin with. And then when you just man, she's taking this really to heart. These people have pissed on her personally raid of grifting off a missing child's case. Think about that for a moment, people. Think about the fact that she is this amped up because somebody said, no, no, we're done with the bullshit. No. When you have disdain on your breath for people like me, then we have some major problems. But let me just be very clear. I will be out there in Sebastian, in Sebastian's area. Unfortunately, I, I was supposed to have the car back yesterday. The mechanic called so I'm sitting tight until Wednesday. I have a funny feeling they're going to monkey F around because I have a funny feeling that maybe something didn't get shipped out when it needed to. Um, whatever the, the case may be, I feel like this is a, um, you know, things happen for a reason. Maybe tensions need to cool down there because let me tell you, I have a pop mouth. I don't know if you've ever heard of a pop mouth. It's not a pop mouth. It's a pop, pop, P-O-P, -P, pop mouth. So you mean like looks good, somebody pops in it? I, I mean, that would be a pop mouth to me, like. Okay. That means I, I, I've been this way for a really long time. I have no filter on my mouth. So when I think it, it pops out. Okay. So if somebody's in my, no, it's called zero self-awareness and your mouth overloads your ass, your ass overloads your mouth, whichever way I face screaming at me, my mouth starts going and there's no telling what's going to come out of that mouth. Now, nobody needs to even be in front of you for that mouth to start going. Listen, listen, Linda, listen. That's all you're doing right now. Oh, I, I, I tell you when I'm at, this mouth starts running and it's angry and aggravated, it's probably not going to stop until you're in tears. So I just want to caution people about that. I'm not a hard ass. But <laughs> Somebody stop her, please. If you actually support this bitch, tell her to go watch herself again. Because she is nothing but contradicting herself. She threatens and then says she's not going to do anything. And then she threatens. And then she says she's not going to do anything. And then she threatens again. Like, tell her to pick a lane and stay in it. Because right now she's driving all over the fucking freeway. I'm also not a pushover. So I just want to make sure that everything is set up. Because I'm pretty sure that the hate channels, because this is going to be posted on YouTube. And hi, thank you for your love and support. And so um, when this is posted on YouTube, I'm sure that the hate channels on YouTube are going to utilize law enforcement resources unnecessarily, again, as they always do with each and every one of these cases. No, you're a menace to society. People need to know about you and you're grifting off of cases and how you impact cases. Um, and they're going to be calling these people and letting them know what I say. And I hope that they do.
okay? Because I want everybody to understand I don't answer to the Cajun Navy. Um, you know, God bless them for their work. I will never support their work. Um, I've looked into their history. I've looked into their background and I've looked into how they treat their volunteers and what they have done to their volunteers in the past. And I suggest every single person on social media to do just that. And um, I wish them the best, but they come after. I encourage you to look into her past. If you want to go down that road, Betty, we can. I encourage you, just like we did with JLR, to look into her past. Public records are a bitch and they're all out there. After me or come at me like they did Dolly Vision and JLR, you better pack a fucking lunch. And any law enforcement officer that wants to come and, and put handcuffs on me and detain me, you better be prepared for a lawsuit. And I'm going to say that with all vitriol that I can. I'm not, I, I will now call my attorneys that I have for constitutional matters. Oh my God. No, Betty, stop. We all know you don't have no fucking lawyers on speed dial for constitutional matters. Come on. You just look, you make yourself look like such a fucking clown by doing this. To make sure that I am protected whenever I go into that state. And it's unfortunate that I have to do this to search for a 15 year old boy that's missing. And it's all. Hey, chapped. Sending you big hugs. I just saw you in the chat. You guys, if you haven't watched, that is a super, you want to hear a victim use their voice. Please go watch chapped or chapped the live we did with chapped or amethyst if you want to hear a victim speak and how these types of things impact feel free i encourage you to go listen to actual victims stories all courtesy of this nonprofit organization right here so cajun navy i'm coming in better move over and make make room for the rest of us peace out and god bless oh by the way oh shit She's not done yet. This is also this morning news break, right? Breaking news updates uh, of, of our cases is a sponsor is, is sponsored by our channel subscribers. So if you'd like to subscribe to this channel again, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had it on for comments only. Oh, and I forgot to let me change my background so I can see your comments real quick. Hold on a second. Let me get a dark background. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to go I'm going to go through your, your questions. And again, I'm really sorry. I did not know that this thing was on. Um, you only could be members. Um, I, I still want you guys to subscribe and support the channel monthly, but I didn't mean to force you guys to do that is what I'm trying to say. So again, refreshing once again, why she's actually here doing this because she is channel building and she is trying to develop an income stream. That's why she has numerous channels. That's why she does this all the time. This is her job, quote unquote, as she says. Meanwhile, we all know that she just involves herself for clicks and views and to grift off of people and spread misinformation and propaganda all over the internet. Oh, I apologize. Cajun Navy has been serving years now, very successful. Mayflower, and you know what? I, I agree with you. They have. I, I just can't support them. When you're called when when social media calls you out there, they specifically said social media content creators is what brought them into the area for Sebastian Rogers. And then as soon as they get in the area, they start disrespecting social media. Again, tell me exactly how any of you deserve respect. Anybody? Because to me, respect is earned, not given. No. Fuck no. And um, now they've called the cops on two of my friends that are out there searching. Two of them. They called the cops on them. The Cajun Navy. By the way, just last week, she was so pissed off. And she's been throwing JLR under the bus. Now, this week, she's calling them a friend. The band's getting back together. You know, it's that time of year again. So they can serve successfully all they want and they can kiss my white breaded ass as well. Call the law on me. We'll see how well it goes for you because I will take this, I will take my platforms. And that right there, my friends, is called throwing your privilege right around. She says her white ass or whatever she said. Then I think she said white breaded ass to be truthful. And then she talks about call the law. That is called privilege. And I will do everything I can. You don't want to be caught calling on Bullhorn Betty. <clears throat> I heard of JLR, but I haven't um, made a face with it. He's an asshole. You don't care. Yeah, whatever. Um, they can't. And now she calls him an asshole. Find the re the uh, most recent case. Is Summer Wells? Is she is she dead? Emma Rose? I truly believe she is. But you know, there's other people that would like want to crucify me and come with me at a pitchfork for saying that. But it's my opinion. It's not everybody's opinion. I want to say that. But I've covered the Summer Wells case extensively. And uh, it's it's a recovery mission for me. It's uh, it, since the day I started going out there, it was never to find her safe and sound. I never ever thought that. The honestly, the evidence we found never leaned toward that way. <clears throat> Who is mobs? Which one? Which channel? Are you talking about Chapped or Amethyst? If you're talking about Am, Am has a channel. We did Chaps on my live the other night. Yeah, Franklin. I don't even want to talk about him. He doesn't deserve the plug, to be honest with you. So I'll just leave it at that. 
He's somebody that hurt me really, really bad, a person I used to work with. Um, He's already there. He's already there. He had the cops called on him yesterday. I was sitting there watching a, a live because I wanted to, you know, I'm nosy. I want to see what's going on out there. And I've got multiple friends in the area that are content creators. Their channel sent them out there. So they record everything. That's what we do. And uh, we share all that information with our audience and with each other. So I was plugging into Dolly Vision's uh, live stream on YouTube. And he's sitting there talking. And it's, you know, he's... <laughs> <laughs> some days he just sits there and stares, okay? You know, if he doesn't have anything to talk about and, and, you know, some of these things are just sitting and waiting for things to happen, right? So you're out there for hours on end. So anyways, I was there and I was just about to log off and all of a sudden you hear him say, oh my gosh, there's a lot of cops that just pulled up over here. And like, he's like from a distance and he's like, I don't know what's going on over there. Something's going on over there. So he's getting out of the car. And he's like, holy shit. He goes, I think it's, I think it's JLR. And I'm like, oh, they're like, they got him hemmed up. And usually when you hear something like they got him hemmed up, you're thinking that your friends in freaking, um, you know, like clips, you know, like bracelets. And Dolly Vision, listen to this. Dolly Vision was out with me to Savannah, Georgia, and this lady was acting all crazy and shit. And she was trying, she was trying to use her car to make people. And Dolly assaulted the woman. Even though she wasn't going to hit us with the car, she was making us feel in, in fear for ourselves. And she had a bullhorn, and she went to swing a bullhorn at one of the people, and Dolly grabbed it out of her hand, like literally ripped it out of her hand. She he ain't gonna do that. So he didn't do anything to her except help somebody else. But he ended up going to jail because, of course, they called the cops on him and tried to say that he he abused this lady. No, she was trying to swing a bullhorn at somebody and he ripped it out of her hand. Long story. I think the charges actually got dropped, but it is what it is. We all watched it unfold. Pretty short. So we protested him slap out of jail. He was on. He wasn't going to get a bond out. I We went up there. I got my bullhorn out. We live streamed it. The sheriff They were bitching and moaning about... You got to press one for fucking English when they were trying to bond him out of jail and none of their credit cards would work. Yeah, we watched all of them fucking their shit show outside of the span of Georgia law enforcement. They protested the wrong place. Yeah, they made complete clowns out of themselves during a missing murdered child's case in Georgia, too. Eric's running out saying, please don't don't do this to my staff. I'm like, let him go. Let, let's get up. Let's move us all along really quickly. Let's let's go ahead and get Dolly up out of jail. Tell us what we owe for bond. We're just going to go on our way. We'll get out of your hair, sir. No problem. No problem. So that no bond ended up being a, 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 a an easy bond to post very, very quickly. And our boy was out of jail very, very quickly. So I had a funny feeling if anything like that happened to JLR, whether I liked the man or not, we would be out there with bullhorns getting that man out of jail. Um, and, and, and this whole story would be a whole different story. So I really hope JLR, I will say seems to be scared of going back to jail so he does run and hide anytime anybody confronts him or anything he seems to be a little fearful which i would be too spending that much time hope that the rhetoric from the navy crate the crazy navy or whatever the navy the cajun navy sorry the cajun navy um you know tampers down we i don't answer to them i'm not going to call them i'm not going to coordinate with them especially after everything they've done right now um what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep my distance away from them and hope to god i never see them again yes but he absolutely did have her bullhorn outside the jail in savannah georgia she absolutely did there's clips on on my page of it she absolutely stood out there her and molly made a mockery they screamed and yelled and confronted law enforcement and were in the wrong spot at first and then that's when molly's job was tweaking and her and spanky were in the car and there was all of the talk about the diet pills and all that stuff yeah they were out there with the bullhorn out front of the jail we i have there's a bunch of clips we've gone over the live streams yeah unfortunately that's true uh that's that's really what i'm going to do when it comes to the cajun navy um I'm just letting you guys, you guys have your own opinions about these organizations that you want to, but um, I'm allowed and I'm entitled to mine. And when you start trying to throw people that I work with in jail, you, you lost my attention. You lost my support. I mean, I'm sure everybody in my chat can understand that. People she works with. Hmm. Oh my God. You never know what uh, happens in the South. That's the crazy part about it though. Well, you know what? I'm from the South. I was born and raised here in Manatee County, Florida. Uh, my family pretty much built, you know, the early parts of this is my County wasn't even a County when my family got here. Right. Uh, well, her family built Manatee County now. Oh, hell, hell, hell. That's why you're so respected at your County commissioner meetings. Right. So I'm from the South. I'm from the South, South. I'm, you know, and uh, I'll tell you right now, I one thing about me is I, I've been to jail before. I don't mind going to jail. I mean, my when I used to go to jail, it was for stupid shit because I used to drink a lot, do drugs. I was in a bad place in my life in my 20s. Um, you know, as you grow up and you let some of those things go and you heal, um, life gets a little different for you. Denise, I actually covered some of that. I It's from Wikipedia, which I'm not really big on Wikipedia because there's a lot of you can edit information in there. But there is a pretty good description of some of his charges and some of the lawsuits and some of his crimes and things of that nature. 
on Wikipedia, but you can publicly search his name and there is a bunch of the reasons why he was in federal prison multiple different times. All of that's on out there. Fraud, identity theft, there's a bunch of different things. But you know, you never know, you, you always remember where you came from. There's one thing that I can never uh, take away from me, right? And no matter how much book smarts I get, I can never take away my street. Actually, I did see some, a couple people chapped uh, mention that Leilani was in court today. Unfortunately, this is the sad thing is people really, these, these cases have continued to happen. This hasn't stopped since Georgia. A lot of people recognize this turning into a Georgia situation, but they have continued to do this no matter what they're covering, whether it's the border, whether it's a child, whether it's, I mean, we saw what she did in the Madeline case. That was absolutely disgusting. And she was going for the other Soto case she showed up there. She uh, Just an epic shit show. They've been doing this all along, right? I can never take away my street smarts. I can never take away the stuff that I learned out there in them streets. And um, that's what carries me through these difficult times. And Congrats for being stuck with me for a year, Bree. These cases, because I've been through a lot in my life, you know, uh, like many of you have. My life wasn't easy. I, I had a lot of abuses, a lot of childhood trauma. I went to drugs. T's been with me for 14 months. Congrats. Alcohol. Welcome. You're stuck with me. I almost lost my life. Um, I cleaned my life up. I turned my life over to God and I chose to take my time, the rest of my time here on earth to give back. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Fuck, oh dear. Why you got to bring God into everything? Why do you got to make it so cringe? Why do you got to do this fucking Joyce Myers trash evangelist bullshit? We all know what you are, okay? This is called trading addictions. When people don't and have a shitty past, a lot of people trade, uh, you know, my spiel anyways. I don't even need to go here, but oh, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Tack. And so at first it was to give back politically because I thought we were all victims of our government, which we still are victims of our government. Um, oh, Lord. But then it came to other victims, you know, not just all of us. It, it started becoming about, you know, Gabby Petito. And that's the one that sucked me. No, 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 no. She realized political activism, unless you're really good at it and know what the fuck you're talking about. There's no money to be made in it. And you actually have to know what the fuck you're talking about and really do research and actually understand policy and procedure and how the government works which she obviously does not with all of her paralegal expertise you know working for attorneys and basically claiming she's an attorney anyways she realized that her political activism was not going to pay the bills because being the front row ho i mean front row joe um doesn't really pay the bills so when you're as stupid as she is for other people in the political activism arena they make really good money absolutely because they advocate for a reason she just advocates for her own fucking grifting benefits so once she realized there was no money in that she re decided to start using true crime in my opinion cases because she saw how easy it was for people to profit off of tragedies and victims and she started using that to push her propaganda so she mixes her political activism in with true crime cases which makes it in complete epic shit show that I love to talk about because she is the disaster of all disasters she is everything I despise about this country and more me into the true crime uh, genre and then I realized there were real victims out here that needed a strong a strong voice and uh, somebody that that didn't mind um, you know making waves in these cases to get to the answer didn't mind applying pressure you know it's just taking my Halloween baby not only that but he he might have paid his debt to society okay I'll give him that he spent his time in jail but you can never take back what he did to the victims there is something special especially fucking demented about anybody that can mock a school shooting that can pretend to be the uncle of a school shooter to involve themselves in a tragedy of a school shooting like they do that takes somebody that is completely devoid of humanity and rational comments like that is disgusting and that will never like i there's nothing about him that i will ever say is good my skills from politics and applying it to true crime in all reality. And um, that's where all, that's where Bullhorn Betty was derived. <clears throat> I've always had a bullhorn in my hand because I've always been a protester, even in political, um, the political realm. It's just, um, I never really got my name until I went to the um, true crime world. I told you, I, I'm not far off. I've done enough research on her political activism to understand that she was not taken seriously in the political sphere. Even her buddies like Mike Lindell think she's a laughing stock. 
she is not a hot ticket item because she doesn't understand policy and procedure in the way that the government works. She has no understanding of it, which you can see by her lawsuit filings. But she will never make it in that arena because she does not have thick enough skin. She is very thin skinned. She is a crybaby little bitch, in my opinion. But I can tell you, we've brought a lot of answers to social media. Uh, we changed the dynamic of true crime. We changed the dynamic of um, um, citizen. Truthfully, Mark, I don't even think Scientology would want her. I mean, they do have fucking Elena Cardone and Grant Cardone, but she don't got enough money. She don't got enough smarts. She don't got nothing that Scientology wants. And journalists. Um, We've pioneered going out and filming from the scenes and not leaving up to mainstream media. We pioneered that. Uh, we've done a lot over the years. And uh, we pioneered something. The only thing you pioneered, never mind. Um, I'm very blessed with what we've done. You know, we, there's three people here that changed the landscape uh, on social media. And we're wa watching the fruits of those labor, of that labor flourish. And who, who is that? You, Molly, and JLR? You, Molly, and Dolly? It showed us everything not to be on social media. Okay. You pioneered what not to do on social media. Okay. And we're watching it flourish right here on this case. When you see all of those social media content creators actually out there helping searching, that didn't happen once upon a time. People sat at their home behind the computer talking about these cases from their home. We're forcing them out in the field to talk about these cases from the front lines. And when you're out there and you have a body out there, guess what? She acts like true crime just became a thing. The, it just became a genre, even though people have been covering cases since the 70s, 80s, earlier than that even. It's been a huge thing. Social media actually, in my opinion, does a lot of damage to cases and to victims time and time again. What they're doing, whether they like it or not, they're actually helping because they can't help but to talk to people. They can't help but to look around. They can't help but to participate in the search. So I'm very blessed with that. All right, guys, you guys have heard me bitching and complaining enough. The Cajun Navy, I, I, I think they need to keep two. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is... That's all I can hear when she said, I'm so blessed. Oh, fuck. You, um, searching for people in natural disasters oh, yeah. because I can tell you um, they're going to be mixing with the true crime community like oil and water. And I can tell you at this case, this juncture, this is not working out. This is not going to be a partnership that I will ever work with again. I'm telling you the next fucking however many months till November till election time is going to be an epic shit show and she is going to continue to mix true crime with her propaganda and spreading so is JLR we're going to see a lot of it we're going to continue to see it amp up because this is that extremist group of Christian nationalism MAGA bullshit propaganda spewing that have found a way to grift off of true crime unfortunately that's what it is um, I definitely will not be calling the Cajun Navy in for any other case this was a hot mess this was disgusting and um, you know fuck them and shame on them for that matter. So, um, I, and you know what? At the end of the day, even uh, even Riley Strain, what did they do? You know who, who did everything in that case? Social media. So, and I have a funny feeling that's what's going to happen in this case as well. So we'll see. Social media spread rumors. They pushed off a lot of information that was not factual. Well, law enforcement said from day one that they didn't expect foul play, that they expected his body to rise. Um, again, please tell us. We'll see how it works out. Uh, but the Cajun Navy... Mm -mm. We're not we're not working with them no more. Mm -mm. Nope. Let th let them go to mainstream media because they don't need the help of social media. And social media probably shouldn't be uh, talking about them anyways as much disdain as they have for social media. If you don't believe me, go to just about any of their press conference and you will hear them talking down to to social media yet again. Well, screw you. We are powerful and we can rock the world. And not only that, but we. I am Betty. Hear me roar. God. Okay, that's it. Ooh, actually, I don't think uh, Cajun Navy found Riley. Truthfully, when the workers got there to move the barge, they found his body. I think they were part of the recovery effort. It took a whole bunch of them. So again, like it becomes, it doesn't matter who finds these people. These are missing persons cases. It, I don't understand this ass padding. If I was to ever come across a missing person, somebody that wants to take credit for that, that's that's delusional that is absolutely delusional and sick in my opinion but there's that do you guys want to watch some dolly because dolly's out there fucking crybaby and like a little bitch too let's see here let's find dolly let's find dolly actually i don't even know if i want to do dolly today dolly has been i should probably change my thumbnail to betty and jlr i could put them together um yeah i think 
I think we have, we've done this for two hours and 13 minutes. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow and do some Dolly. Oh, it is so bad. Dolly's live right now. Of course, Dolly's live. Dolly is a piece of garbage. I'm sorry. He is what he is. <laughs> Shaft. <laughs> um, Lolo, there's a lot of confusion over that right now. I'm not sure, honestly, to be honest, which is which. There's so much confusion. Yeah, Dolly's out there sleep driving. He's inventing a new thing of falling asleep. Shane Nowland, are you asking me if I'm jealous? Look for Sebastian instead of whining. Um, Honey, boo-boo child, let me introduce you to something. You were in my fucking chat. Shut the fuck up and go away. First of all, I don't exploit children that are missing. I exploit the fucking clowns that are exploiting the children, all right? There is nothing one single one of those people has that is any sense of jealousy from anybody. He's 5'7", pushing 5'2". Nobody is jealous of a fucking single thing of Betty, JLR, or Dolly. I don't exploit the tragedies. I know where to stay. But if they continue to disrespect a child that has autism and diminish him to a diagnosis, I'm going to continue to tell them to fuck right the fuck off. And thankfully, none of those clowns work with children with special needs. None of them are victims advocates. None of them actually could even get the background check to work with children with special needs. They All they can do is diminish somebody to a diagnosis because that's who they are. Yeah, I seem very angry. Oh, my God. No. Y'all, if you think I'm angry, God, God bless you. You think the energy should be positive. Well, I'm I'm not the girl for you because I'm going to call it like it is. I'm not here to cushy your feelings and make you feel warm and fuzzy about a missing child that they're exploiting. Sorry. If you need sugar-coated and if you need somebody to kiki and ha-ha and like make you comfortable and give you a pillow and tuck you in at night, I'm definitely not the fucking one for you because I'm going to tell you straight to your fucking face. These people are fucked up. What they're doing is fucked up. What they do to victims is fucked up. What they continue to do to these cases is fucked up. And one of these days, they're going to meet the right one. And I hope they fucking get what's coming to them. Okay. Does that make you feel better? Anyways. I know. Make a monster yesterday. I got told, you use the Lord's name in vain. Fuck yeah, I do. Jesus Christ. What do you expect me to do? I got trauma from religion too. Okay, bitches. It is what it is. <laughs> and then I got called a potty mouth. Uh, duh. When Revival told me like all the different things like I was called because I missed it in the chat, I was like, and, and their point is, <laughs> and the point is, um, Shane, Shane, I understand what you're saying about trying to be positive because it is a missing child. Okay. I can, I can understand that. I am not talking about the missing child for a reason because I don't diminish a missing child. I don't cover that kind of stuff. I cover the clowns and the people who re-victimize victims over and over again, who victimize victims, such as Tim Ballard, The Sound of Freedom, uh, fraud, I mean, movie, and all of their producers. I talk about the attorney general from Utah who exploits victims. I talk about the government who exploits victims. I talk about JLR, Betty, Dolly, and any other fucking clown that you can come across that exploits victims and their tragedies for profit and gain and clicks and views on social media. I find it to be extremely disgusting. So while I understand that you want me to be positive because it does involve a child, there is nothing positive about this situation. What they are doing is absolutely disgusting. It's dehumanizing. They are diminishing a 15-year-old child with autism down to a diagnosis. They are trying to cornhole the parents and say that they're the reason all of this shit is happening. When in reality, law enforcement hasn't said a single thing of that. Okay? So I am still hopeful that he... Sebastian, the 15 year old that is missing, will be found alive. That is my hope. So while I agree that positivity is great and there needs to be more of it in this world, I will continue to call out the assholes because one thing about me that I've never stated that's very clear for everybody over here is I'm a fucking asshole with a YouTube channel who will continue to use this fucking yapper 
in the way I see fit. And that means calling out the fucking bullshit that clowns our society and puts bad policy and procedure and keeps fucking bullshit keeping going. All right. That's just who I am. Take it or leave it. That That's all there is to it. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I am so grateful for that because this bitch over here has a voice for a reason. And I will continue to call out the fuck shit around us, all of us. And the, at the point in time where we are in society, Shane, there, I understand that positivity is so needed, but when you have the scum of the scum, like J Betty, JLR, and Dolly out here doing this to children on the daily, to missing people, especially their targeted genre of children, you know, they don't give a fuck about any other kids besides the ones that make mainstream media attention, right? Well, we do need positivity. I don't get down with fuck shit, seriously. Anyways, I welcome all of you guys that are here for the bullshit. I say it all the time. I'm not here to make your feelings happy. This is disgusting. This is what it is. And it's about time we start looking at it at what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit for anybody's feelings because unfortunately this is terrible. And any of us that are parents or have kids at home that this could be any one of our children, and if you don't realize that this could be your family going through the same shit, please sit back and realize they have no boundaries. So with that said, no, Shane, you're, you're totally fine. I agree with you on that. I agree with you that there needs to be more positivity, 100%. But in these situations, the reality is the reality. We can't continue to sugarcoat this shit because this is why people continue to live in this alternative reality that and condone this shit. It has to be called out for what it is and said flat out, this is what it is. You didn't disrupt anything. Please don't take me talking to you as insulting to you. This is just who I am. I'm very passionate when it comes to shit like this. And I'm an asshole. Flat out. I will be the first to tell you that. I actually opened my channel with, <laughs> I'm an asshole with a YouTube channel and that's it. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you guys back tomorrow. Thank you, File 2020. See, I love my UK people because they get my dry sense of humor. So thank you so much, Trish. Welcome in, everybody. If you aren't here and we do, part of what I do with my Islanders is we elevate victims and their voices. We elevate their stories. I encourage you to go back and look at some of my videos of and listen to the victims of horrific crimes and how fucked up our systems are and the policy and procedure and people that put them in place and continue to vote for people poor policy and procedure and push propaganda off. I encourage you to go listen to the victim stories and what the justice system has done to these victims with your own words, hear their voices. That is what we do is try to elevate the victim's voices while these people are re-victimizing victims. Have a great night, y'all.